All right. Hello, the world. How's everybody doing on this post-election day? Cheers to you. He says with a Coke Zero cherry. I generally go uh, Diet Dr. Pepper cherry, but they were out, so trying the Coke Zero cherry, which I know is horrible for you. I recognize that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I flipped around a little bit. I moved the chat off the window just so I could actually see some stuff. Um, and I put our little GIF up here. I wonder if there's a way to make that actually transparent. Or to cut it. So the trick is the GIF has different sizes, right? Oh, so I could make the GIFs always the same size. No, that still wouldn't work. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to make it transparent. It, lo it looks great there because it's like on uh, white, but there it doesn't look so good, right? Because it's the white box. I need to make that transparent, which I could crop in on it really specifically. I could look here at the camera, except I can't see it because it's over on the monitor. Um, that's not floating above my screen. That's in OBS. Um, how did so? Because you can't make. I need just like a transparent GIF displayer. Because um, they're all good. They're like they're all different widths and heights. So somehow in the browser, there's going to be a background on it. Um, so I got to pick a color. I think I'm gonna make it black. Let's do that. Actually started to do this a minute ago. But something that I thought would work didn't work. I thought that should work. Did they take away body background? So you actually have to do a style. Oh, it's BG color. Isn't it? This is going old school. That's it, BG color. There it goes. Oh, I missed it by just a mark that's better and of course uh, I should do this as style I should practice body background color You can just do three, I know. Oh, you just do color, right? So weird. Seems like it should, like. Oops. Tried to run it. There we go. That's not awful, but be a little better if it was different. Yeah, that's not horrible. Yeah, whatever, it's fine for now. I'm gonna play with it. Oh, the thing that I do wanna do is just change it so the command is GIF. So we're gonna do that real quick. Uh, we're gonna PyCharm. I think it's TestBot, TestBot Alpha. TwitchBot Alpha, sorry, that's what I meant. Which I should rename to Twitchbot 9000. Uh, commands new GIF. 
So... Ah, oh, commands command. Um, I was gonna try and set up two. Oh, I need to actually update it here. I forgot that. Uh, That'll change it. Okay, we're just gonna hard code all this stuff real quick. So we're gonna do lowercase gif. Yeah, we got Twitch back going. Um, the right now I'm just changing. There you go. So I gotta update. I want to update it so that it says so that you can do gif instead of new gif, and then lowercase and uppercase. So what I was looking at is how to do this command. I was going to try and like just make it so I only had to do it once. Well, I wonder if you could do this. So we're probably going to break it right now. Did not like it. Yep. OK. Oh, actually, I wonder, is it already case insensitive? Here, let's fire it back up. Let's see if it comes back up. OK, yeah, it's ready. Uh, where'd my chat go? There it is. So now it's just GIF. But if we do it uppercase, it doesn't, case, doesn't catch it. OK, so it's case sensitive. So I just got to duplicate this. I could throw it into a method, but I'm going to cheat and just duplicate it. Also, oh yeah, there's a command not found somewhere over here. Didn't like it. I'm sure there's a way around that. Um, just like pulling in the commands and throwing it back through. Uh, ba -ba -ba. What am I doing? Or just making a method out of it. Oh, yeah, and also I need to do this here because I just coded it in the file itself, but that of course got overwritten. Style, body. Background color, that color, that. Close that. Okay, that's getting ugly, but whatever. It's close enough. Style. Woo! Style. Why is it yelling at me for that? Oh, for one, that needs to be there. Doesn't like that for some reason, but whatever. Is there a quote or something thrown it? Eh, who knows? All right, let's see if that actually works to start with. I broke it. Oh, I am not good at CSS. Body. Let's try that. Right. So restart it. Ha. <laughs> I wish I was an asset developer. I'm just messing with their API a little bit. All right. Well, first I'm seeing if I can get my GIF command to work here. Is it about space? It's about space videos. So I'm uh, I'm trying to automatically assemble. Uh, oh, that's not a good one. Where did the actual one go? Uh, I'm trying to automatically assemble. I'm trying to grab video from NASA's image API, pull it down cut it up and then automatically reassemble it randomly um, to act as a video bed for uh, YouTube's free MP3s to make music videos out of it. Um, that's the goal. But right now I got to get this GIF thing working. Um, and I've, it's, I'm also, 
uh, trying to do kind of TDD style, test driven development style on it. Um, and I'm struggling with how to test the randomness. So I'm actually redoing the code uh, to see if I can figure that out. So far that has not worked very well. What am I doing wrong? Oh, it thinks I'm trying to input. How do you do that? It's, so that's the Python thing for inputting uh, content. Embed CSS Python format. That's why I was freaking out. I'm just going to do it inline. That way I don't have to worry about it. Style, spell style right. I cannot spell today. Background color. All right. It's easy to do TD around the stuff and no jet. Yeah, and it's probably it's probably not that bad. Um, no, I, so J I'm sure Node is way more popular these days than, um, and JavaScript in general is more popular than Python. Python's just, I do a little bit of it at work. Um, and this isn't really a backend thing. It's just a script I'm going to run. So the overhead of having to install Node or messing with it, especially because I don't really know Node, um, is why I'm just messing with Python. Uh, it's expediency basically is what it amounts to. Um, uh, Node is on my list of things to mess with, um, but I am not there yet. Also, oh wait, did it die? Here we go. Ah, oh, there we go. We got a GIF. All right. So then we just need to add the color back. Style, color, number, FFF. Save that. So if we restart this... Oh, I'd love to do Go. Yeah, so like I, I want to learn all the languages. Um, the with without a doubt, uh, the I don't know. So I've done, I've got a, my head around just a little bit of Go's template system because I use Hugo for my website, which is built off Go, and so their template system is Go based. Uh, so I've seen just a little bit of it, and it's kind of weird because the order of operations is different in the way that you do variables or in the way that you do like conditionals. So instead of doing like, if something equals something, you do if equals something one and something two. So it kind of bounces around a little bit. It's kind of messed with my head for a little while, but now that I see it, it's like, oh, okay, I understand it. So it's still just an if statement, but the syntax and the ordering is all different, um, which makes it break your brain the first few times that you see it. Uh, all right, let's see what we got. Hey, it worked. There's Kermit. All right, so the last thing I want to do on this is set it up so that we can do uppercase as well. And I'm going to cheat and just copy all this stuff, which is not the right way to do it. But it works. He says, probably. But yeah, I uh, I don't know actually, actually know what the next language I'm going to do is, um, or the next thing I'm going to do. I'm working on... Um, a Django website, which is based off of Python. So I'm kind of in the Python world right now. Um, after that, I'm probably going to use one of the JavaScript languages. Um, React apparently uh, works well with Django. So Django has a REST framework. React apparently works really well with the REST framework. So that's probably going to be the next thing I try and pick up just to see how that goes. Junior plus, I mean, like what, like 
if you're slinging code, you're slinging code. Like it's all just practice and experience to me. So like technically I've been coding for a very long time in terms of I started a long time ago, but I haven't actually written that much code because a lot of my career, I wasn't actually writing code. So am I a more junior, more senior, more whatever? Like I kind of don't care. Um, the it's to me, it's kind of about what you can pull off. Um, and to me, it's more about like the dedication of being able to pull stuff off. So if you can make the stuff go, sometimes it's going to take people who are less experienced longer. So what? Um, like, like this is me, like I'm do like this video thing that I'm working on. I haven't done that type of, t of TDD on the Python scripts, trying to do the randomness stuff. I just don't have that much TDD experience. So like, I'm really slow at it. Like this thing would have taken me, like I could have coded it just procedurally without tests in like 15, 20 minutes. I've spent hours on it. Cause I'm trying to like practice, get my muscles practice for doing the TDD stuff. Hey, I changed it, Steve. Oh yeah, sorry. Hang on wait a second. I need to update the actual code that says that. Uh, I'm making it shorter. And also I'm letting you do either uppercase or lowercase. Try GIF, just GIF now and see if that gets you there. You can be my tester. Oh, what did I do? I broke it. That's a bummer. What the hell? GIF. Oh, I wonder if it doesn't like it. Yeah, whatever. Screw it. Woohoo, tester. Welcome to testing, by the way, which is, hey, try this, and then it doesn't work. And then, hey, if you don't mind, try it one more time. BS yeah, salty, so it's just, I mean, to me, it's just keep keep slinging code. Oh, on it, that's a good sign. Hey, it worked. Also, I need to tell you new GIF to change. I'm gonna try it, well, I gotta restart it. I should probably make that go. I might have broken it again. Let's see what happens. GIF on it. GIF to change. There we go. Hey, it's Doctor Who dancing. That's about how I feel too. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to do? Yeah, I need to, I kind of want to make them bigger. Which I guess I can actually no. So those are already cut. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the formatting of stuff because I've actually now got that over, over to the side, uh, so I can't see it directly in the area that I do my editing. Um, you can see it coming in there over on the side, but th that lets me get a much broader thing over here, so I can actually see what's going on. Because um, like I blow up the fonts to make it easier to see on. YouTube or whatever and like it's so it's so little space so yeah so actually yeah I would I would stick with one thing okay whatever this is just the way that I would kind of approach it but take this with a grain of salt right um I would figure out the language first and then the framework second because the language is the foundation of the framework. Um, you can be working with both, but like if I was going to focus my energies on learning, I'd go like get a, if you're in JavaScript, you know, some a JavaScript book and like go start to finish with it and like really kind of get the concepts down. Because um, once you have those fundamental concepts, they largely translate across languages, right? And then the framework sit on top of that. And But I would definitely stick... I would stick with one for a while until you really feel like you got it. Um, and I, but I, and it depends on what you mean at like low level, because um, low level can be like you know sorting B trees or whatever, like and doing your bubble sorts. I've never done that stuff, so I wouldn't. If you're talking about that low level, eh, do it if you want. But I've never needed it. 
Um, but like fundamentals of language uh, is to me like uh, a musician practicing scales. It's the the fundamental. Um, so that's that's kind of where I would head, um, and it's what I'm going to be doing increasingly with some of the stuff that I'm going to work on. Like when uh, I get into Go, I'll I'll do some basics of it just to kind of figure out the syntax uh, and get things moving that way. Same thing with, and then same, same applies to the framework. Um, and it's really kind of tricky, right? Because there's all these tutorials all over the place. Like with Django, um, I tried to go through the official tutorial, but it didn't work for me at all. And I tried another tutorial. It didn't really work for me at all. So like, I'm still trying to figure out how to get my head into it. Um, cause it's some things work for me and some things don't. And I think that's probably true for most people. Um, but I, I think I've got my head largely in it now. Um, and I've got a new book on it uh, to, to see what happens. <laughs> no, you definitely you definitely got to do your own C library 100 percent like that's it's like building your own lightsaber, right? That's a requirement. It's fundamental. Um, uh, yeah, no. So it's funny. I, so I started my life in Perl, um, which gets a lot of a lot of crap, but like it's a programming language, right? Loops, variables, conditionals programming language um so yeah but if you if you do make your own library in c then then you're you're pretty studly that's pretty awesome uh there's gotta be a way to force it the pixel size you want uh yeah no, no no absolutely so i've got um yeah so i could probably i can almost certainly do transform transform yeah I could bump the size I could do all kinds of stuff with it I'm sure um oh actually I could do the real simple right and just stretch it uh but I want to like get it I don't want it to be too deep I want it to be wider and then all the images are different sizes so like and I want to get actually a transparent background behind it instead of the black one um so that it doesn't stick out as much uh all these things will happen at some point, but uh, that's right now. I'm just happy that it's there. It's, just, it's a little bit too big because it's covering up a bunch of code. See, that's the thing I got to kind of walk the balance of. I don't know. Should it go over there? Maybe down here. Oh, that's probably a better play right there. Yeah, that's probably a better play. There's not a whole lot of code that happens over there, I don't think. Yeah, most of those are the side windows that are fine. Also, it's got an interesting symmetry to it. Uh, cool. What's the other thing I was gonna do? Uh, what am I thinking about Golang feature for backend development? Node full-time job to Golang internship. Ooh, interesting. Um, wow, that's a really personal choice. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily base that off of the language. I would base that off of the career path independent of language um so if the job that you have has a tremendous potential for a good career path even like even if it was language i wasn't a huge fan of i would probably stick in that general direction versus backing off to an internship but if the internship is with a company that you're likely to get a good gig with that will then go on to a different career like a, long, a good career path and you may not know the answer to this right but I, I would focus less on the language and more on the on the the fundamentals on or like the you know, fundamentals apparently my word today, but the the business and the career underneath. Um, if they're both the same, like Node right now and JavaScript right now seems to be the way that things are going for the vast majority of jobs that are out there. Um, so purely looking at the job market and do your own research on this, but having breezed across the job market just a little bit javascript is ruling the roost right now um 
stack overflow developer survey. So this is a good one to look at. I'll throw this in chat. I think this is the right one. Hang on. There's a big number of 65,000. That's probably the number of developers. Um, most love languages. Ooh, Rust is way up there. Python. Wow. These are not the numbers that I was expecting. This seems weird to me. This may be most love languages, but like, because JavaScript is not the my favorite of languages. But hang on, there's there was a we get stuck over time, experience by country. I thought there was an actual like job market survey in here too. Little salaries, that's not a bad place to start. I mean, it's not all about your salary, but like money's money. Um, these don't really talk about languages, but this is a good, it's a good thing to at least have. Um, Well, I'm not Miller Senior, so maybe I should invest time in more featured language. This is a new project using Go and so Yeah, so if you, yeah, again, don't like do your own research and like figure that out. But if you're seeing, if you're seeing increasing moves to Go, and I'm not, again, I'm not really watching the industry. Um, I'm watching Twitter. <laughs> so that's where I see most of the JS stuff. Um, but that could be just because I'm not following Go developers. Yeah, so I guess that that's a question. Now that that's a that's where you might make a distinction in terms of career path is do you want to do, you know, DevOps or front end or front end back end or whatever, or do you want to focus on the back end? Because if you want to focus on back end, that's a different conversation, especially about the internship and the job. So if, if your job is front end and your internship is back end and back end's where you want to head, that's probably worth a jump. Again, do your own research. <laughs> I can't can't stress that enough. Um but yeah, I wish I had a straight answer for you. That's just like, hey, do this. Um, but it's it's always tricky. But I I don't feel like, yeah, you don't like front end at all. So you pick Node for back end. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at you, but it's I I'm sympathizing with you and through a chuckle. Um, yeah, if if you don't like front end at all. Uh, I would definitely look around and do some research and see where the back end is going. Like I can't imagine. So like go the, the thing that I've seen in go was a comparison between the Jekyll site engine that I use or used to use and the Hugo site engine. So Jekyll's written in Hubie, uh, Ruby, Hugo's written in go. Jekyll took about 20 minutes or sorry, 20 seconds to render my site. Hugo does it in like 0.3 seconds. I was really impressed with go. Um, now some of it's probably, I'm sure the way that it's programmed and blah, 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 blah. But like, I was really impressed with go when that fired up. So uh, I'm super interested in his language, but again, I don't do, actually, I guess I do do some backend stuff. I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah, it's, I, th I think if I was in your boat, I would be thinking what, where do I want to be in five years or 10 years? And which one of these two decisions or which one of these two options that I have to make decision about is going to get me closer to where I want to be in five years or 10 years. Um, and then, but who knows what the future holds, right? So you got to just pick one and go. Um, the, the only other thing I'd say there is like, sometimes we're more likely to stick with the thing that we're already doing, even if we really like the other thing. So just weigh that in your consideration. Um, but let me know. I'm actually super curious where you ended up. Um, yeah, so you thought it was bad. I would pick up JavaScript. Yeah, um, yeah. So and the other thing I'm interested in is like ES6 and the TypeScript stuff. I TypeScript, I've done once or twice, but like I don't. It's funny because I'm not a big fan of it conceptually because it's like TypeScript sits on top of JavaScript, 
but like everything we do is just layers of abstraction sitting on other things. So it shouldn't bug me, but something about it bugs me. Partially, I've never used it or never really used it. Um, but then there's also like the ES6 stuff and all the stuff that they keep adding to the language and formatting and, and crystallizing. So um, that was not really any advice at all other than <laughs> it's just it's a nutso thing to have to figure out and solve. Um, but again, the if, if I had to just make a single decision about it, I'd be thinking about that five years and that 10 years um, and then trying to figure out which one of the, like if I move over here, does that take me closer to my five and 10? Or if I move over here, does that take me closer to my five and 10? And then go, not go the language, go, go. Um, that's right head. And to be honest, I'm super happy that right now I'm in a position where I don't have to do that. Uh, Cause having to retool for stuff, um, especially cause my gig doesn't have a lot of programming stuff in it. So it would take me a while to actually like full set up and retool. Um, all right, so we did this, we did this. Uh, what was I doing? Yeah, here we go. So I want to see, oh, actually, I guess I can look. Twitch ideas. So make a book march that throws over to Net Newswire. I'm not going to mess with that right now. No. Um,. I'm going to see if there's something else that I want to do before I jump into the video. I don't think there is. I'm going to go take a look at it. All right. Bye-bye, TwitchBot. You can always use TypeScript in production in real life. Yeah, and like, I, I don't know enough about it, but there's also a thing that happens sometimes where you get up and running fast with one language or one framework or one whatever, and then you jump to another one. But like, sometimes that, like oftentimes if it gets you up and running, that speed of movement is worth it. Um, like if, if it gets you, if it gets dollars coming in the door, um, even if it's not, you know, the optimal way to do it and you have to retool later, as long as you get enough money to do the retooling can be fine. Um, uh, but yes, yeah, so I, I, it's kind of all over the place. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to see like what the stats are on companies that start with language a become successful enough that they hit scale and then transition to, to B. Right. I know Twitter started with something, maybe Ruby on rails even, I can't remember. Um, but then over time, as they, they got popular, they had to like retool and retool and retool, right? And now they're at their scale where I'm sure the vast majority of their stuff is custom work. Um, even though, didn't they do bootstrap? Didn't that bootstrap? Don't look at that. That's probably bad. Isn't this a Twitter thing? Oh, the bootstrap team. I thought it was originally a Twitter. Eh, whatever yahoo used to have one their yahoo user interface library or whatever like big companies start making their own stuff um, video assembler there we go yeah so this is like it's a super this is a super simple thing i'm just trying to go through the exercise like doing the scales again and figuring out how to test it well um and that's where things got tricky and have been tricky um, so let me back all the way out of this and see if I can get a running start at it. So here's our test and there's really just a couple tests. So the way that I'm running this is I'm basically starting with an integration command, uh, integration test where the thing that I want is for this command to come out of it. And here's the actual oh, test integration video assembler. Yeah, I'm just, I'm having problems getting my hooks into how to test this. Cause here's where we make the command. I'm just concat, like this, this makes it. 
I should make sure all my tests pass right now. Are we passing? Yeah, whoops. Let's try running all of them. This number down here, sometimes I don't see it. And like if you click in here, it only tests one, that particular test. You have to click outside of a test to get all four of them or however many there are. Um, Yeah, so here's where I'm trying to deal with the ram randomness, where I'm trying to pass in clips to use. But I'm getting close to the point where I'm just gonna fire this thing up. Um, so test integration, assemble video. So we're not gonna assemble the video. We're gonna walk through these by steps. So let's actually just get a video to start with. Uh, clip directory, JSON path, possible clips, clips to use. Where's our test data? Test data. URL list, URLs. See, I also don't know where to put this stuff. This is gonna be me bouncing around a lot, trying to, to look at stuff and figure stuff out. Interesting, yeah. And I'm with you on the front end stuff. And that's one of the things like I haven't been in front end work in a few years or several years really. And so like looking at it now, it's like, I don't even know where to jump in because there's like all this other stuff going down. Like right now there's, I hear a bunch about react. And again, that Django framework and react, it's like, okay, maybe I'll play with that a little bit. But like for my personal website, it's just static files of HTML. There's no JavaScript on it at all. Um, Cause I'm not, doing big web front end stuff right so i i used to like that stuff a lot i don't know if i would like it anymore getting back i'm sure if i got back into it i would but that's not really where what i'm after at the moment um so yeah i i mean it sounds it sounds like goes a pretty solid play especially if if uber's gone after it um and again like it's it's a little bit of a thing for me of if you're solid in what you do, regardless of the language, and you can prove some stuff out in terms and like whatever people always talk about, hey, where's your GitHub and like all this other stuff. And like, that's a little bit like, eh, but like there's value to that. Like if you can prove and show that you can do some stuff ideally in the language. And then the other thing I would say is like research a company that if you got again, if you got a target for a company that you want to go to figure out what they use, go do that. Um, Cause you can, if you've got a pretty fundamental understanding of languages and how stuff works, you can ramp up in a language in a short amount of time with a decent amount of effort. Like if you just look at it for 15 minutes a day, you're not gonna get it in three weeks. But if you spend a few hours a day for a month or two, once you've got the fundamentals down of any language, you're gonna be in really good shape with any other language, right? Um, it, it's all about time and effort, basically. Um, or at least that's my experience. Uh, other people may have different experiences, but that's that's kind of the way that I've seen stuff roll out. Um, so yeah, so figure out where, if you, if you can figure out where you want to go, and if you can't, then if you if you're interested in back end, go. I tell you, there's still um, there's still also like back end stuff. There's also some amount of legacy stuff going on. Um, so there's some legacy languages that might still be okay to look at. Uh, I don't know that I'd necessarily want to go that route, but I mean, one of the things I keep hearing about is, you know, people are looking or paying really high amounts of money for COBOL, COBOL programmers because they've got all this legacy stuff that they don't want to move, but they don't have any, like all the programmers who know, uh, or developers who know COBOL are dying. So it's all, 
<laughs> it's all just a mess. It's all just crazy. Um, if if I was going to do it, so the other the other thing that I'd actually really focus on, and we do some of this, is I would really start getting into the Amazon stack um, or Azure. Take your pick, but I would go Amazon just because they seem to be eating the world uh, with the AWS stack and learn about that. And it depends a little bit on what you're talking about in terms of back end. So like, um, you know, talking to databases or processing files, ingesting files, like um, doing network stuff, like back end can be around there a little bit, right? Um, I'm assuming you mean more like back end processing. So grabbing data, dealing with incoming requests, web stuff or whatever, but like the the Amazon stack in general, I would get a decent understanding of that. Even if you don't program in it or on it, I would have that kind of on my resume um, in terms of like, I know how to you know spin up servers in EC2. I know how to like set up a basic network in, you know, uh, a load balancer and all the other stuff, like just a little bit of a, of a thing. And I, if you're programming, eh, maybe not, but like the more that you can know about the more things, the better off you are, but you want that fundamental language would be my, or you want the fundamentals down. I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> it's very tough. Like, cause it's all like general advice is just a super fraught thing um because this is all without knowing anything about you or anything about the future or anything about the companies you're looking at or anything about much um but it's just you gotta you know it's taking guesses across different things making assumptions uh so we get this so i think yeah so let's go ahead and just start building for real so test data v3 so let me bring this back up Data, dev, video assembler, test data, URL list. So we need to pass in a URL file. Uh, these are our tests. These are our tests, yes. URL list path equals, we need a comma there. So this is going to be in test data v3 slash URL list slash URLs. I love autocomplete. It is my favorite. All right, so we got that. And then we need to have it here. Self URL list path equals URL list path. See if that works. So we're not actually doing anything with it. We're just passing it. See if it works. Still works. Microsurf is, is yeah, uh, because they start doing the project from the very beginning as if they have a million requests per second, right? Um, when they could just make a monolithic app and run the project. And that's a little bit about what I was talking about earlier too with the whole JavaScript thing. So like, if you can get up and like, whatever skill set you're walking into a thing with like for, for right now the closest thing that i have to a framework that i could build on is django like i'm messing around with it a little bit like if i if i spent all my 40 hours of next week working on it i could have a i could have a production ready site ready to go by next weekend couldn't handle a tremendous number of traffic um but it would get up there and go if I tried to do that, even if I knew, so I've got some experience with the serverless stuff with Lambda functions and API gateway and load balancer, I forget what it's called, CloudFront. Um, that's a much more complicated thing to do uh, because like you ha then have to tie into other services like your user authentication service, which they have Cognito, so you can do this, but like you've got to build all these connections. Django just gives you all this stuff out of the box. So like you can just, pop it up and be ready to go and start accepting requests, logging in users um, and going. So yeah, I would, I, I'm a big fan and it's of the, get the first step out the door um, and then try and figure out what you're actually gonna do. That's the way that I would approach that thing. Um, 
but I think I think you're right that there are that there are a bunch that actually go through and they spend a bunch of money because the serverless thing became a really big you know buzzword a few years back it may still be again I'm not super in the industry anymore um but like for me all these things are just tools and there's a really good um book out there I like called the innovators dilemma and the innovators solution they're two different books but this they talk about what is the job to be done? So like if I'm building a product, what is the job to be done by it? And the same thing with the tool set. So once I know what the job to be done is, then I can actually assemble the tools to make that happen. And as long as I'm crossing the threshold of the job being done, then the tool set that I use underneath is is irrelevant. Um, obviously it's relevant, but like it doesn't, it, uh, I would treat it like a black box, right? So like, here's the, here's the interface that everybody sees and everybody uses. Whatever's back here can be whatever's back here. It can be whatever I want to have. So the least amount of effort that I can put into the back end and have it present the front end that I need to have happen, that is probably the best move for me to get out the door. Um, you do have to think about the long term a little bit. Like you don't want to build complete crap back here. So there's a balance, but it's like getting getting something going. There's a statement, what uh, perfect is the enemy of the done. So like if you keep trying to make it all perfect and stuff, you're never going to get anything shipped. That's my experience just with personal stuff, not like with startup stuff, but like it's it's easy for me to, to jump through. And like I've even run it to a few things in this where um, I'll try and like, ooh, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this, but I don't even have the first one done yet. I have to back off of that and be like, let me just get the first one out the door. Because the other thing that happens is I learn a lot during the first one that may completely change where I want it to go. Um, so yeah, it's it's a different, I, I think that's a different mentality. I, I think the, the startup mentality that I've seen third hand is just a different approach than the way that I would do it and do stuff. But I think there's also some amount of that's the expectation of how you do stuff in there now. Like there's there's some of like fitting into the suit of uh, of the pattern of it. Um, all right, so here's a test thing, right? Because I don't need to test. So I need to load this file. Here, I'm gonna run this over here. Load URLs. Which is not a thing right now, so we need to make it. But like, I don't need to put a test off top on top of this because all I'm doing is opening a file and doing a JSON load. And like, I could test that but there's not a super amount of value in that. If I can spell with, that would be nice. With, open. And so we're setting this stuff up here. So I'm not passing as variables. I'm just setting, I'm setting everything as instant variables right now. With, open that. Read as URL JSON file. URL data equals JSON load URL JSON file. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, oh wait, is this? Yeah, I can just do this and just, I don't need to like, eh, no, we do want to load it. Um, URL data, so. Let's set this up up here real quick. Self video URLs equals a list. Uh, so for URL in URL data URLs, which gives us a list self video URLs append URL. 
All right, let's see if we're still passing. Still passing. I see that the problem is the service center core has much more time development. People always don't sit in the same job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so like the other thing for me with the, with the serverless stuff is frameworks don't exist that I'm aware of yet. I'm sure people are working on them, but I haven't really seen one yet. So like back in the day, I built my own websites in PHP. There was no framework, so I built my own framework on top of it. Everybody else in the world also built their own framework because frameworks didn't really exist at a at a large scale, right? Or at a at a, at a well built scale. Over time, we built frameworks for all this stuff. I don't know what the PHP ones are. I'm sure there are a billion of them, but like you know, in Django and PHP. Oh, so I think Drupal isn't that PHP? Django's in Python, um, but like that framework gives you a tremendous amount of stuff. With the serverless stuff, you have to build all the functionality that the framework provides. That's a tremendous amount of effort for very little reward up front. Again, like potentially you can scale that to infinity, but working like you're not going to have Amazon level of users to get with. So you've you've spent all this energy to build. Uh, to build a framework that you could have just gotten off the shelf is the way that I look at that. Um, so I'm, I'm right there with you. You're exactly, you're exactly right. And then if you have people leave and like, it's also, we've done some, la uh, some Lambda work and like the test setup for Lambda isn't great yet. They're working on it, but like it's, you kind of have to have two different, Amazon setups and it's not the easiest thing to move between them. I haven't had that. Like the I'm sure there are better ways to do this, like with code pipeline and code commit and all this other stuff. But again, you kind of have to build all that stuff out yourself versus like Django, right? I just load it on my machine, I make a git repo somewhere, push it, and when I'm ready to deploy, you just go through the deployment. You have to build more of your deployment pipeline. Um, which again, I'm sure it's possible. I'm sure it's been done, but like it doesn't, it's not nearly as out of the box. And that for me is where you cross into the threshold of like, what's the value of this? I still like doing that stuff and there are still value for it. Like we do, we do some processing for it where we have specific things happen and we have small Lambda functions that, that act on that data and then do something with it. Lambda is really good for that. For building an entire web framework, I don't see it. Um, until somebody builds a framework that sits on top of that and gives you all the stuff that all the, you know, out of the box stuff uh, already has. Uh, okay, so that didn't blow up, so that's good. So we're loading our URLs. Yeah, and see this is where it just gets a little bit funky. So I guess I can just verify that they're there, right? For well, and actually, I want to change the name of this. So we're going to do this because I want them to be video URLs. So where's my load? I'm a big fan of naming conventions being the same. For load video URLs, which needs to come back over here. That's a test. We don't need to do that. Load video URLs. Why is that yellow? It's kind of weird. Uh, oh, because we don't have a URL in there. I'll fix that in a second. Oh, wait. How'd that work? That should have exploded. Oh, because it's not required, maybe? I don't know. I'll figure that out in a second. Um, video URLs, self. We want this to be video URL path list. Video URL list path. This, 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 this is getting long, but that's okay. Oh, because I'm passing it in the test. I'm not passing it yet in the other thing. So we'll do that. All right, we still passing? I feel like I missed something. No, still passing. Kind of incredible. Let's put this down here. Does this work? 
No, JSON is not fine. Wait, what? How the... Oh, 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 I see, I see, I see. Gotta be here. There we go. So let's just see if this goes for video URL in va.video URLs print video URL. See if that gets us some. Yay, there's our URLs. Uh, a little about Rust. Hmm, yeah, I've, I, I've only ever heard about Rust. I've never really seen it. Um, I hear whatever anecdotally a much a lot more about go um yeah and, and i mean so back to your question about the um the internship right so if the internship is in a language that you want to so like if the if you're doing javascript in your career and uh, or your current gig and uh again if your internship is go and you're interested in that type of back-end stuff i would that would be a high consideration for me um, just to to get to have resume experience with a language is better than just than not have than having just like personal experience with a language right um, so if you can say in my last job I did this stuff in go you hear job and go in the same sentence as compared to I've done this stuff in go but again if you do enough cool stuff in go that can be interesting like so we've seen some candidates that have come across and like the ones that are most appealing are the ones that have done stuff like the thing that i care the most about is people who have done stuff um because frankly i, I can teach you a language um i can teach you a framework or i can i can help you i can i can get class like i'm not gonna teach you but like i can get you taught in a framework and a language that matches what we're doing but I need to know that you've got the experience and the the willpower and the and the ability to do stuff and to complete it, um, and especially if it's stuff if you do cool stuff. So like, it doesn't even have to be big stuff, right? So like yesterday I built a little election tracker, just because why not? Like, just playing around with stuff and figuring stuff out. And the other aspect for me with that is that flexing those muscles again. So everything you can do to practice for me. I mean, for me personally, everything I can do to practice is valuable to me, even if it's not like specific about a thing. All right, so we've got our URLs. And here's where we're gonna pick And see, this is where I get stuck on the test because there really doesn't need to be a specific test for picking. So I'm loading URLs. So what? Like that's I don't need to test the JSON module and I don't need to test the file system open, right? Which is what that does. Um, and I don't need to test assigning. Same thing with getting a URL. So this is for the video assembler. So actually what I need to do I'm trying to figure out if I need to back all this stuff up into a single. All right, I'm just going to start making more progress on this and we'll just see what happens. Um, Cause I keep, I keep getting twisted on it a little bit with how to do it. Uh, but we're just going to start making it go. And so I'm going to use this kind of as my integration tests. Yeah, that's actually not a bad way to do it, right? Start. So I've got the target. Crap. Um, and again, I could do this in 20 minutes if I wasn't trying to get the test suite wrapped around it um, in a way that makes sense and like split stuff out. Because part of this is like I don't have a lot of experience with TDD. Um, or with a lot of object-oriented stuff. 
So, and where to split stuff and how to jump stuff and move it. Um, so this, this for me is also just exercise. So, I'm going to start over. <laughs> um, cause I want to, I want to try splitting, splitting stuff out more and seeing how that works. Just making small classes with different things. Um, and seeing how that goes. So get all that stuff in there. Oops, here, close this, close this, close this. So I want to start with a test file, right? Test integration. Hi. Add new directory test data v4. New directory output. So, what do I need? Yeah, and again, like I'm testing commands, right? So I need to see the structure of the command. I need to see the file path. I need to read more books is what I need to do because like th I'm, these are all solved problems. I'm just banging my own way through them. Um, test video assembler. User bin, environment, Python 3, spell the word import right, unit test, class, video, assembler v4 test, which is a unit test, test case. And then down here, if name, equals so the other trick with this is i'm getting much better at figuring out like this is all practice like i don't feel bad about starting over like it's kind of embarrassing on stream right but um i'm getting way better at knowing how all this stuff works just because i keep doing it no test found sweet that's what we thought so let's just make a tone test test it there's one test passing okay and so now we're going to start doing from actually, you know what? I want to do this. We're going to rename this because I like names. Video assembler V4 or 34. I hope it doesn't go that many. Refactor. So the way that I like to work is a really strict red, green, red, green, or red, green, um, to the point where like, I'm going to try and import from a file that doesn't exist yet. Cause I want to go red and then I'm going to make the file. Like this is to me just the practice. You know, as I, Years from now, maybe I won't do this, but for now it is the practice of red, green, red, green, red, green. User bin, environment, Python three. Class, video. And also the number of uh, times that that has caught stuff is high. Uh, Oh, here we go. See right there. There we go. Passing. So we got it. So now really what I want to have is I need 
I need. I'm trying to figure out what the output that I want to have of the full video assembler is. And the output is an FFmpeg concat command. Oh, and that would include the directory. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm doing basically the same thing I did last time, but this is, I keep taking different runs at it, and soon I will hopefully find the path that feels right to me. So I need that command. I need the FFmpeg, the other FFmpeg command to to do the com the combination. So if I, think, I think if I just focus on those two, that's... Yeah, because those will include all the pathing. Like those those two things are the output that I need. Okay, so that that gives us the target, right? Test FFmpeg. No, test scene detects. Oh, I can make this a lot simpler too. Test scene detect command. Interesting. Yeah. So I actually don't have a degree either, but I happened to come up at a time when having a degree wasn't necessary. Now, Steve, who was just on a little while ago, um, works at a university and he's seeing a lot of change in the university system. He doesn't work in computer sciences, but he's just seeing it in general. Um, But one of the things that's happening now, I think this is it. No, that's not it. This is it. So some things are changing, um, potentially. Except they're changing. No thanks. Um, check this out. I only have a college education. I don't know if you have the same education. Not a bachelor's, but for us to study after the ninth grade. Okay. Yeah, so. I went, we had 12 grades that gets us through high school. And then f theoretically you have four years of college after that, if you get a bachelor's degree. Um, I went to school for seven years, but I didn't graduate because I'm not good at school. Um, but check these out. So Google, Steve was talking about this. And so you need to, you need to look in this a little bit, but Google is basically setting up these courses because they're trying to create developers that they and the industry can hire that aren't about having a college degree or aren't about having a degree. They're about going through these specific courses and by doing that, you pr and they're, uh, under, my understanding is they're basically free. Um, they Google specifically will use that as 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 if it was a degree, basically, in terms of saying like, hey, this this shows qualification for having done what you need to do in order to prove to us that you know how to do it. Dig into that a little bit more. That's my understanding of this, but I've only gotten at the at the very high level of it. But hopefully, and I don't know if this is happening, but hopefully more and more companies will get away from the requirement of the degree. HR departments love it because it shows you like, ah, oh, you can do a thing and you can follow directions and like all this other stuff. But like, that's, I, I hope we're moving away from that. I, we're not there yet, clearly. Um, but this sounds like a really interesting first step. Um, the other thing that's happened a lot with all the COVID stuff is you're finding increasing numbers of people who aren't paying for school or for, who aren't going to college because they don't want to pay $50,000 to get on Zoom calls that may change the job market in the next few years. Um, 
because people are going to say, like, of course, I'm not going to go pay for Zoom college or whatever, like, which you still can. That's not that's I'm not judging that one way or the other, but like that has a potential to change the way that the job market works and exists. Um, so don't lose hope, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, uh, and definitely, definitely look at this stuff. This this sounds super interesting to me. Um, yeah, I think so. yeah. Career certificates. This is it. Learn job ready skills to start or advance your career. Yeah, to start or advance, but to start is the key, right? In high demand field, high demand fields. Yeah, qualify for jobs across fields. That's that's what they're doing, right? They they want the certification to say you know what you're doing. Some of these companies could care less about a degree, or increasing numbers are caring less about it if they need to hire somebody. Like it's supply and demand, right? If they can't find people to fill the jobs that they need to have filled on the tech side who have a degree, they'll go look for people who don't have a degree but have one of these certs. And these certs might even push in, so. I would look at that. All right, so we need to find our actual scene detect commands, which I should really put these in here so I can see them. So here's our scene detect. So we're going to run one of these over our test data v4. We're going to make a scratch pad here for a second. Scratch pad, scratch pad, scratch pad. And then... Uh, where am I going? Where am I going? Mass API, wrong. Video storage. Right, scratch pad, that's where I want to go. Uh, let's not do that in there. Let's do that up here. So it's at the root. Root. Refactor, rename, scratch pad. New directory, we're gonna do uh, scene detect v1. Scene detect v1 dot bash yes let's add it that is not what i wanted get our readme come back here scene detect one bash uh input so let's do new directory video source video source and video clips uh, all right let's find our video Uh, scratch pad, scene detect, video source, original. So our input here is going to be, 
Where are we? Scene detect. Video source. Wait, why is that doing that? Scene detect v1, right? ORIGI and an original dot MP4, MP4. And then video clips. Detect content, the scene split video. Bin bash. So if we run this, there we go. Okay, so here's our command running. minute we should see a bunch of videos here do, do, do. waiting 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 detecting output format okay but we know that this is this looks pretty good so We're gonna do this. So now we know what we're targeting. Scene detect string is gonna be this. Test data v4 output video output uh, video storage original mp4 output goes to test data v4 video clips. I need names in there. Okay, this will be fine for now. Step one, get this done. Input, output. All right, so this is gonna fail because we don't have the thing set up. Oh, I wonder if I killed that. I did, oh crap. Yeah, we can run that from somewhere else. Um, dev, video assembler, scratch pad, scene detect. Set it up to go and go. There we go. Because I stopped it in the middle and it did not like that. All right, so that's cool. Test scene detect man. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And here we'll just prove that this is, this test is, so it's red, now it's green. And then what we need to do is video assembler, scene detect command. We're just gonna fail because that doesn't exist. So def setup self global VA. Nope. VA. VA equals video assembler v4. Still gonna fail because that doesn't exist. Come back here, make it. Pass, passing, assign it, gonna fail, 
fails. Command equals our command, return command. Passing. Okay, so now we can actually work on making it happen. Um, let's get let's get all the things that we need. So that's we're gonna run that. And then we're gonna run so we can get rid of this. FFM peg concat command here is where I may have lost something. Um do Uh, here we go. So we'll get this set up just so we got it documented. Example FFM peg concat command. I guess we can actually make this be the actual command, right? config.json t output mp4 input one mp4 input two I just call these i or n out in one in two in three and we'll do the dashes maybe maybe let's bring this back in there we go Concat, concat command. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that's going. And then now we want to do VA, VA. FFmpeg concat command, which doesn't exist. So that's going to fail. We're going to make it def that self go pass it passing actual equals. We're going to fail again. Command equals that return the command run it passing. Okay. So that's our output. That's our targets. Uh, we need one more, um, which is the overlay of the MP3, which I hope I still have. Um, config run bash. There we go. Uh, oh, I got to do all the splits. Okay, no, that's okay. I'm going to, we'll focus on this first. Peg overlay audio overlay audio command.
Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is this? Ah, gotcha. Input is video.mp4. Input, I guess I can put this in quotes just so it's there. Audio.mp3. Copy video, copy, map 0v0, zero zero. map track 1, audio 0, shortest output with sound. Final video, that mp4. So that's passing, right? Passing, okay. All our tests passing. Passing. Test, FFM peg, overlay, audio command. I hear explosions. So that's passing. Yay. FFmpeg overlay overlay audio command it's gonna fail put that right here pass it so passing but if we make actual down here, equal that, it's going to fail. Command equals that. Return command. Whoops. So now we should be passing. We're passing. Let's run all the tests. There we go. Okay, so that's the full set of the video assembly. You split, oh, but no, so it doesn't need scene detect. Ah. Doesn't need scene detect. That can happen inside the video. All right, so I'm actually gonna drop that. I'm gonna drop that. All right, so that's the assembler. And then we're just going to fire off those commands. So now we just need to populate the world for those commands. Big dart. <laughs> right? Hey, look at that. We don't hey, hey, change it again. We don't need to do, we don't need to be doing this anymore, right? Not get. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, Steve, you're still here. Have you been here the whole time? Hear me ramble. Oh, that one's freaked out. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the gifts. This isn't the main gif. Oh, well, yeah, the mice is over there. Look, it's over here. And now it's over here. So it goes up and then it comes from the side. Shit, never mind. Uh, so, did you hear any of the stuff I was talking about education? I was quoting you as much as possible.
<laughs> right? Such a weird, weird time. Salty's doing it too. If you don't have speakers, how are you listening? How can you... Are you lip reading? Oh, 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 okay. I gotcha. So only when you're at the machine with your headphones on. I gotcha. Yeah, I was, I was showing uh, Salty here the Google cert thing that you were telling me about. Um, that looks super interesting for uh, getting gigs without a degree. Yeah, about six months to complete. No previous experience required. Developed by Google. Grants and scholarships will be available hosted on Coursera. I would go with the data analyst role over the project manager role over the UX designer role. Oh, wow. I picked wrong. If only I could draw. Oh, you updated your blog? Nice. I need to get on my blog. It's, um... Look, <laughs> those are all drafts. And they aren't even, like, drafts. There's, like... This is my automatic grabber... Oh, something broke. Um, of the pages that I went on. So, and then these are stream notes. So, I haven't written anything since... Ah, in which I have an MRI and a CAT scan. Um, I don't remember if I told you about that. Uh, Victor, yeah, so I don't know if you saw, if you were on it all last night, but I actually ended up making my own election results scraper um, just to do it. Uh, and pulled out, uh, I was pulling off, a, somebody was scraping the New York Times data feed and posted it. So I just built the, a little giant font, giant font. I built my own little thing and tried to, bit, I spent most of the time trying to format it down to fit Twitter because this had like three characters left or something like that. Um, but I was, cause I was trying to figure out like none of the things that I saw showed you the, like the number of votes that one or other other candidate needed in order to cross the threshold to 50 percent plus one um for the state or for the yeah for the state so i built this because and then also i wanted to see the percentage like how what percentage of the remaining votes did they need to get like none of the things that i saw showed that so i went out and built one um which was super trivial because somebody had done all the scrubbing of all the data for me I say use Google Keep for that same purpose. Uh, sorry, Google Keep for what purpose? Yeah, sorry. So it was, it wasn't exactly 50 plus one. It was number of remaining votes divided by two minus candidate X's lead take that number times two and add one so it was the it was the number to basically it was the number to win um regardless of uh the of the other candidates or whatever it was basically like here here's the total number of votes here's what you need to to have and so that would be and if somebody else took some of the votes, it would self-adjust itself, I think. Like, I'm pretty sure. I'm, like, kind of sure. Yeah. Um, Steve, yeah. And so, and the other one was, like, I don't know if the... Um, election results. Nope, that's not it. Live updates, maybe? No. President. 
Yeah, so in this, God, good lord. Well, I've got the font giant or whatever. But like the other trick with this too is, see how long it takes to load? Is broken. Refresh. Yeah, so like you have to like mouse over everything to see the things. Um, and like, I kind of want to see the list. Google actually did a really good job. I don't know if they're still up. I thought this was a really good design out of Google, um, for showing the swing states. Um, and it would have been cool to see like the collapse of the, of the uh, watch it collapse down. Um, but again, it didn't show me. Like I'm, I'm really interested in that raw number of how, like how many more votes do I need to cross the threshold? Um, and then what percentage of the available votes? Like that's the reason I built the thing is because I wanted to see those numbers because it's like this doesn't help me. Like I see that they're close, but these are very big numbers that I can't really wrap my head around. And I don't really know how far away point two, like what point two percent is versus these. Um, and, and how to make that jump, right? I lost Chrome. There it is. Oh, you use Google Keep to do your blog post, right? Yeah. Um, oh, and I do, so I actually use mine. Um, I use that. There's, that's some of my potential blog posts. Um, in that little NV alt thing that I use. Yeah, <laughs> right. Put my pills in the daily container thing. I literally, I have one of those. And today I, I, I haven't used it in a while. And today I couldn't remember if I took one of my pills. So I took it anyways. Um, but I need to not do that because I just have to stick with a regimen or whatever. Yeah, and the numbers and the numbers are super shady. Um, like I totally get because, but like they have to. Well, I'll show you. So let me see if I can find the feed. Um, oh yeah, actually be on here. So this was cool because I don't know whoever did this, but like, yeah, Victor, I didn't even have to scrape the New York Times site. They just somebody just put together and did the scraping and put together this JSON. So I just sucked down this JSON and, and ran a little code over it. And like, it was super easy. Like it, it seriously, I spent probably a couple hours doing the formatting and it probably took me, I don't know, half an hour, maybe 20 minutes to actually get the data put in and do the math. Um, but yeah, so it was also kind of messed up. Whoops, come here. Ooh, it's a big file. Hang on a second. Reopen results example. Let's make it so humans can see it. Yeah, so it kind of messed with me a little bit because they have this total expected votes value, but if it's like rounded to the nearest thousand. Um, but if you go through, there's a, um, counties. So it's a list of states or a, an array of states. And then inside each state, there's a counties that's an array. Um, and then it would have, uh, bu -bu 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 total expected votes. So this, this goes down to the, to the number, right? 76, 34. And then you would go through and here's the results per candidate. So you'd add all these up and then you'd subtract the, the total of this from this. And I don't, and when I first did it, absentee seemed to not be involved. I may have been off on that, but whatever. Um, and that's how I was doing the math. But so that, but those total expected votes, like it didn't work. Something was wrong with Georgia. Like, because the the total expected remaining was 
negative 7,000 or something because the, they didn't, they didn't have the updated expecteds or whatever. So like those, no, those, no, like those numbers are just like whatever. Um, but it's, you know, you work with the data you got. You know, people are too ambitious. <laughs> Got to watch out for those open source folks, man. F information wants to be free. The data wants to be free. You heard about YouTube download, right? That got um, the uh, RIAA or whatever sent, or trying to stop the software that lets you download YouTube's video or one of the pieces of software that lets you download them. Yeah, the estimates. That's right. Military ballots were due, I must say, yesterday, but I think there might be a few more due on the 9th. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a million YouTube downloading apps, right? Oops. I went to the wrong browser. Always does that. It's hard to admit defeat, but the votes have spoken. Dun dun dun. Has he tweeted again? Whatever. He is using capitals. Never mind. It is what it is. Yeah, you know that's impossible, right, Steve? That's that's physically impossible. Like, there's math and physics and magic and on. I don't know something else behind it. I don't know. I got nothing. Um, Old Man Capitals is actually the name of my new band. Just so you know. <laughs> No, I'm just not commenting. Like, I I I don't really have feels about it. Um I'm just not gonna comment on something I would have put on YouTube <laughs> that's gonna be up for the rest of the world. For I mean for the rest of my life. Because somebody's gonna download it and do whatever. Um But yeah, it's it's super weird. So I think Biden speaks at like eight tonight, maybe, or something. Yeah, that's that's usually what I do. I just kind of go, okay, noted, I guess. That was weird how everybody was freaking out about him. Like, so somebody was saying that he's actually going to be under some potential issues because of the way he was basically doing some effectively some campaigning from the white house or something um so like i don't know it, that whole situation is just i'm just glad it's over glad we no longer have all the craziness of the voting stuff going on because it were they effectively campaigning is that what's happening and you can't campaign on you know, from the White House, basically, because um, it's like a public institution, but a public, I forget the term, but it's a public thing. And from that position, you're not allowed to do it, right? That's the, because that's not playing fair, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. The that that story is not over, right? Um clearly we're not at the beginning because the beginning happened in the past, but it aren't over. Oh yeah, yeah I forgot about that. Sleeping in the bedroom. Sleeping in the bedroom. Smoking in the boys' room. That's what that sounds like. What's the PA lawsuit? Oh, you know what I can do? Hang on a second. I might be able to work magic. Can we work magic? That didn't work at all. Oh, wait, still gone. Hey, it kind of worked. Oh, still freaking out. Definitely freaking out. Put that one away. Oh, it's going to be in both places. Oh, well, whatever. It's close enough. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. I, I stay out of it so much of the time. Oh, so it's locked. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's effectively locked, right? Unless something super crazy happens. The November surprise. I really thought I had it yesterday because I posted uh, Remember, Remember the 6th of November. If they had done it yesterday, that would have been the perfect tweet. But Remember the Remember the 7th of November doesn't have the same ring. I posted it anyways, but. Hey, Hanging Chads. That was the name of one of my first bands. Craziness. Everybody in the band had to be named Chad, actually. You had to legally change your name to be Chad. Or Chat. Chat Chad. As long as it rhymed. Yeah, no, I, um, I'm curious. I'm, I'm going to watch the Biden speak tonight and just see what he says. Oh, Steve, are you doing a Discord thing? Are you going to have your folks get on and do a thing? Chad, Brad, dad, mad, the mad, bad dad had Blad? I don't know. Oh, I was just wondering if you already had set that up. I know you guys did the debates. Which I don't understand how you people's brains work with doing that, with being able to talk and listen at the same time. I think you're all witches. Because my brain doesn't do that. Yeah, I mean, I... Th <sighs> Rhetoric wizard here. Reddick Wizard sounds like a great D&D &D. or um, I don't know. It's a good fantasy game. <laughs> time Wizard. Is that like a Time Lord? Is that above a Time Lord or below a Time Lord? The Time Wizard. Yeah, I so knowing very little about same <laughs> knowing very little about it the math or the electoral college just seems completely weird to me um i mean i know about it whatever i learned in fourth grade or eighth grade whenever they teach you whatever i was gonna i was actually that's one of the reasons i didn't say it too much steve is because i'm guessing you have many a thought about it <laughs> yeah uh, you should do a video about that So, all right, Steve, if you had to if you had to break it down and and I'm going to force you to a binary decision, keep it or make it go away, where would you end up? 
nope, no reconsidering. You gotta, you gotta, I mean, you can reconsider all you want, but like it right in this moment with the knowledge that you have, would you keep it or would you, would you disband it or dis whatever it make it go bye bye? I just, I, I can't get my head around like you, you need to. <laughs> right on. I need to get exercise. I'm so not in doing exercise right now. I just sit on my tail. Like I work and then well, so I write in the morning and I should go walk at that point, but I feel a little guilty about not immediately getting into work. So I go work and then sometimes I eat and then I stream and then I go to bed and I rinse repeat. There's a scope for limited and decisive litigation because technically you're having 50 different elections. Interesting, maybe? I don't know. But I still, I just still can't get around like people in one state's votes way more than people's in other states. I, I just, I can't get through that. Yeah, so I I understand like history, but I guess I'm looking for like how what should we like we can modify the system theoretically at any time we want through effort should it be modified. Yeah, and so I actually didn't know that senators were elected by the people prior Yeah, I, country countries is right. It's a good way to do it. Like the states are their own, or that weird mix of them things themselves and not themselves. Oh, so that's an analogy then, or that's analogous. Analogous? Is that the right word? Yeah, Victor, I think Steve beat you to that just a second ago, maybe. Yeah, that's super weird to me. And like, so maybe with senators, even though we're in the opposite state right now, maybe I could see that because but not really like uh, I, I just can't get around the thing of like we we have the capability of having one person one vote be a thing so why isn't one person one vote the thing skewing and waiting like great if it's weighted for you not so good if it's not <laughs> All good, Victor. Going more nationalistic versus state, Steve. And so this is where you and I need to talk for six hours so that you can talk for five hours and 40 minutes and I can ask you 20 minutes of questions. I, 
I don't know enough about this stuff. Interesting. Tension will only be paid to the national government and small localities and minorities. Opinions will be crushed. Well, where, yeah, so where do you, I mean, was that part of the debate is like, where do you draw the line? Because like, you could say the same thing for states versus cities, right? Or city or states versus counties and counties versus cities. Like it's where collection of people, where do you draw the lines around things? So not I'm not thinking about physical boundaries, I'm thinking about like just collectives of folks. Oh god. Yeah, right house that gov, constitution. Do I have the amendments in here? You pointed me to the Federalist Papers before, and I've looked at a couple of them, like scanned them, um, but that's a lot of reading, and my brain was not ready for that at the time. Which one am I looking at? Ninth and tenth? States that the list of rights enumerated in the Constitution is not exhaustive. And people retain, wait, is this, that's not actually the wording, is it? That's just saying what it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I like that's not the. I can't be the language. Or maybe it is. No way. There we go. Text. Okay, so here's the actual text. Why did they give a description of this instead of the actual sentence? Powers not get delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. That or to the people is weird. Amendments 1 through 10. Oops, I saw it. The enumeration and the constitution of certain rights shall not be construed or to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Got it. Huh. Oh, here's Federalist 84. Fifty one. There you go. That's the one you said. Structure of the government must furnish the proper checks and balances between the different departments. I'm a fan of that. I feel like that's something we should focus on. It's a weird pseudonym.
Yeah, and I'm guessing <laughs> J Mads represents. <laughs> um is is he your is he your favorite? Steve? J Mads? I like his third album. His fourth one eh, straight a little bit too far, but on the fifth one really brought it back. Oh, it doesn't have the full text of it? Well, that's kind of crazy. Why didn't it just have the... Or is this it? Purpose. No, according to Madison. Madison's key point. Why are we doing an overview instead of actually putting the thing in here? Right, yeah, more minority opinions, not minority in terms of people who are brown, because, right, that wasn't exactly a thing back then. Meltdown has begun. Trump mocked for tweeting in all caps that is refusing to concede after losing potential presidential race. <laughs> ah. Ah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Right. Well, why deal with it? I mean, it's already dealt with. Like, it's a inalienable, inalienable fact of existence is people own people. Steven say good lord use some formatting folks that is a wall of text if I've ever seen a wall of text oh you know what you should do I should use the Federalist Papers and design mockups instead of using Lorem Ipsum text <laughs> that'd be awesome Have fun at the Trader Joe's. I'm going to be back on later tonight if you're around. Uh, I'm going to watch the, I'm going to go for a little while and then watch the speech and then be back on probably after that. Y'all can talk later. You don't have to solve it right now or you don't have to, this conversation can go on. I'm curious to actually watch it. Steve can, Steve can fill you in with his, uh, very, very well researched thoughts. In two hours, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. The so the speech is uh, eight o'clock Eastern. Is I think is what I heard. What time is Joe Biden speaking? Speaking. Eight p.m. Eastern. Yeah. This is super weird. Google has been picking up. See ya, Steve. Google has been picking up these counters in front of CNN stories for a little while now. Something's there like their engine that they use to do the bots is picking up those pieces of text. Uh, yes, two hours, right? Two hours and 20 minutes because it's about to be six. Yeah, two hours and 20 minutes. Victor, that's right. Eight, ten, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, twenty, twenty hours of EST, or however you say that, twenty hundred hours, no, hour. I actually don't know how you say that anymore, because you do twenty one hundred hours. Do you just do twenty hundred hours? I've never said that out loud before. 
weird. Things you realize when you talk out loud on stream. Because I don't use, uh, or like I'm not, uh, you know, military time is what I would call that. And it's not a thing that I do because uh, I'm not in the military. Saw some Marines today. That was cool. Or like older Marines, whatever, collecting for Toys for Tots, which is cool. Twenty hours, okay. We're gonna say twenty hours. You and me, we got it. Everybody else can follow us because we are acting like we know what we're doing, <laughs> which is the way that I do lots of stuff. Oh yeah, I started back over on the video assembler. By the way, I'm still experimenting with the right way to do the testing thing, and so I've probably spent ten times more time working on it than it would actually take to build it if I just built it but like I'm I'm still kind of like it's really it's a good exercise for me for my brain <laughs> ah, it's awesome yeah so if there's a two in front of it you overslept um and if there's a one in front of it you're Probably close to oversleeping. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I don't know. I go back and forth. So like metric system, hands down. I'm in. The the military clock or the, the that I. I go back and forth on because the clock like I like the fact that the clock points to eight and you don't have to do math. And there's not a secondary number behind it that's the 20 or whatever. Um, now, if we redesigned clocks to actually have all 24 hours on it, that would be an interesting thing. But I think that would be too small. But I think that's because of watches. I don't know. Yeah, metric is the standard. And it should be the standard and is the standard um, for all things except, you know, people who grew up in the wrong side of the metric line. Yeah, and all, like scientific stuff, like I still remember actually, I think it was, there was some satellite, and I don't think it was Hubble, but it was one like Hubble, where they actually ran into a problem because everything was done in the metric system, but one contractor took the metric system numbers, but used them as, uh, you know, inches or whatever, and screwed something up where it wouldn't fit but it was one of those things where it was close enough that it almost fit because it was in one of those areas that like it almost jived but did not oh, i don't remember the second one i remember hearing about one maybe i do i don't remember uh, I, I know i heard about one and maybe i'm mushing two of them together yeah uh cherry coke zero by the way um which is fine. Like, I know it's awful for you, but something's going to get you. Hopefully not. At least hopefully not, hopefully not anytime soon. Oh, Lockheed Martin. Yeah. It's probably just either Lockheed or Martin Marietta back then, though, right? Before they joined. I grew up in a town um, where there was lots of rocket stuff happening. And... That's, they used to be, yeah, it used to be Lockheed and then Martin Marietta. And then at one point they merged into Lockheed Martin. Um, I don't remember when that happened though. Late nineties, early two thousands. Can't remember. Um, I had, I can't remember. I knew some people that worked for Lockheed back in the day or well, I knew their, my friend's parents. Um, I didn't know personally, like my None of the 13 year olds that I hung out with when I was 13 worked for Martin Marietta or for Lockheed or whatever. Because there are some smart kids, but not that smart. All right, so this is cool. So those are our 
commands that we want to run, right? So the, the two commands are we're going to split the video. No, split the video is going to happen elsewhere. Yeah, so this is the assembler. This is cool. I like this. Oh, it's been Lockheed Martin. <laughs> um, now I want to know when that happened. Or should I look it up? Is that is that prying too much? We're going to find out. Aeronautics is hiring. Let's look for combined. A merger of equals. The phone rang shortly after 5 p.m. on March 19th, 1994. Catching the chairman of Martin Marietti, Mar Marietta just before he said home for the evening. So 1994-ish. Done deal, 95. 95, oh, you found it too. Yeah, I was in college. I'm older than I realize. Oh, you were born two months after that? Nice. Yep, that was my... So I graduated high school in 93, so that was my second year in college. Which is super weird that that was so long ago. Time is strange. All right, so how do we want to test this? You don't remember too much? Yeah. Uh, I had a lot of fun in 95. I had a lot of fun in all my college years, so which is one of the reasons I also didn't graduate from college. But... I definitely had a lot of fun through it. <laughs> I'm told it was a great year. So, wait a second. Um, top song, 1995. Billboard year, here we go. Gangster's Paradise, nice. Waterfalls TLC, Creep TLC. Kiss from Rose, I remember all these songs. I don't remember another night. Actually, I don't remember a bunch of these. Most of these are probably crap. It'd be really interesting to go back and see how many of these are actually crap. Dear Mama. Windows 95. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that that was a huge deal, like front page newspaper stuff. And like because I grew up in a tech town or whatever, my dad had had a computer for a while before and we had Windows 3.1. And I still remember getting 95 because in 3.1, if I remember right, like if you did something like copy files from one place to another, it was basically single threaded so you couldn't do anything else like you just had to sit there and wait for the copy files to copy and so you could do something like copy files in 95 and move another window and it was just like oh, amazing 98 I wasn't bad I burned 98 a bunch though um I was trying to do some dev work on it and it just I kept murdering it Nice. Was that the 98 one? Uh, 
Oh, AOL. I remember AOL. We had AOL. That was when I first discovered online photography. Um, oh, I actually think I just had a good idea about this too, right? So I could have like a little controller, which would help. I'm gonna. I'm trying your tell, don't ask thing. Um, but yeah, I used AOL a bunch. Yeah. You've got mail. Uh, well, so actually, I was on. We were on. Did you ever use BBS's bulletin board systems prior to like AOL and all that stuff? Like old school. Actually, I'm guessing no, because you just told me that your first computer was that one and it had AOL. But yeah, like BBS's were the thing kind of before, or one of the things before that. Right, yeah. And nobody did, like, unless you used it. And, like, again, I grew up in a techie town, but, like, most of the folks that I knew also didn't know about that stuff. Because, like, unless you did it, you didn't know it, right? Oh, you got into middle school? Nice. When did you start, like, programming stuff? Or, like, doing, like, programs? Where do I want to get that from? Let's make, I'm gonna try and split these things out. Whoa, see, I didn't, I, I did two weeks of C plus or C plus plus, sorry, in college, but never touched C. Wow, C, that's pretty hardcore. Yeah, uh, so I actually, I just discovered the first book that I use was, the first two books that I use were the Pearl Cookbook because I didn't have classes, I just grabbed some books, um, but were the Pearl Cookbook and Learning Pearl. And apparently I got rid of the Pearl Cookbook, but I still have the Learning Pearl book. Um, and it's actually somewhere around here. Um, but like, I'm really, I'm kind of glad that I still have it because it's like, neat, this is where everything started. Oh wow, like the full that's the the like giant reference one, right? Actually wait, which one is is that I don't think I know that one. I don't know the KNRC book. Is that the is that the go to? C programming language. See, part of me actually wants to go back and like read these just to like learn more about where stuff came from, right? Kind of wish I could have like a sabbatical and just like go mess around with languages and learn languages and stuff and frameworks and just practice. That'd be awesome. Instead, I stream, which is where I pick up stuff. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like the it's the one. So you build stuff in C, and then other stuff gets built off of it. Right. Are you? You use C to build other things that then build other things, right? Because most, if, check me on this, but like most languages are actually written in C, right? So like Python is written in C, or at least it was. I think at some point they self-compile, right? You can write Python in Python. Um, I mean, you have to be able to do that, right? If they're Turing complete or whatever. Yeah, I'll add that to my list. to read ooh and Alt is slow right now oh python still in C okay gotcha we well, yeah, and so uh, I don't know if you were on when salty was on earlier but he was talking about go to um and like Rust and some of the other kind of, because those are the lower level languages too, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's got to do the interpolation, interpretation. Uh, yeah, let's pass this. Main, no tests. Whoa, something blew up. What blew up? Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, okay, so Go is one that, that could make itself. Right. Yeah. So there's a really good book that I read. Um... I may have talked about this before. Code the hidden language of computers. This is uh, this is where computers made sense to me, because it starts you off with, like, hey, consider a light switch. It's either on or it's off, right? Um, and then it talks a little about like how telegraphs worked and how you could have a relay that would actually, when one when it went up one way, it went down another way. And so if we take those things, we can start assembling logic gates. Um, and then from logic gates, we can start moving into tracking, you know, numbers and how you would count numbers and binary and like all this other stuff. It just walks you through the, the actual like CPU level and assembly and the, like the binary level of computer stuff. It's fantastic. Like once I read that, I was like, oh, I actually understand what it means now to say ones and zeros down there. It's a great book. It's a really great book. Um, and it's funny the first time I read it, cause it gets, I mean, it, it gets deep. The first time I read it, I only read the first in number of chapters and then I was like, okay, I'm good. It got, got too much for me. But then the second time I kind of read all the way through it and I was like, oh, I get it. Like some of it gets super complicated in terms of like all the stuff that they're talking about. And I kind of was like, eh, I get it, but I don't need to like dig into it. I'd be, yeah, so I'd be curious to see what you think about this book and see how much it ties into the to the to the logic circuits and computers because that's one of the big things they get into is like how you make you know AND gates and OR gates and ZOR gates and exclusive like NAND gates and there's like six or eight types of gates I can't remember um, but it was neat because it shows you like how you can make you know. Um, uh, cycles uh and how you can go through and like do an or so that if something happens over here you actually get to see the, the maps of all that stuff i actually want to make a um basically a web page but a little thing that's based effectively off that book that's like here is the fundamentals of computers but not really call it the fundamentals of computers just talk about like hey here's here's how computers work 
push this button and see this turn into one. Push down here, it goes to a zero. Okay, let's make some numbers. Like, I want to like do that book as a web or as a series of web pages. Which ones are Nans? Not and. Which produces an output which is false only if all the inputs are true. Okay. So you can so you can send it false false is true. True false is true. False true is true. True, true is false. And then from there, you can spin everything you need from it. Nice. Okay. That's sweet. I'll have to look into some patterns on that. And that that's one of those things, though, I'm assuming, right, where there are combinations of NAND gate. Like, you, like it's, it's like modules, right? So it's like... If I have this set of inputs, I can get this set of outputs. So if I have six things coming in and I need them to work in this particular way, I can stack in however many gates and however many ways to make them go, right? That's that's the math, right? That's how it works. That's super cool. I actually want to play with that a little bit more. Oh, yeah, here it goes. <laughs> yeah, here is literally the thing that I was just talking about. Um, I wasn't cheating. I did that the other way. Uh, and gate. From MP3, import MP3. Blow up, blow up. Yeah, so I've got, I need to count. I haven't made gifts in a while. That was one of the things I used to do at night um, to chill out was just turn down the lights, put on some music and make animated gifts. Um, I haven't done that in a while because I keep streaming until late, which is not, I'm not angry about it. Um, so there are currently 443 possible gifts there. And I've got a bunch of other ones that I haven't added into the mix yet. These are the ones that I cut. That I need to put in there, but I kind of want to post them. And I want to remember which ones that I did. Max Edrum. I haven't looked at these in forever. Oh, I need to post these and do something with them. Discrete math. See, this is where I need to go on sabbatical. Enter to discrete math. Fundamentally discrete rather than continuous. In contrast to real numbers, they're probably varying smoothly. I understand all these words, but not in this context. Oh, I get integers. Graphs, I kind of understand. Statements and logic. Discrete mathematics can be characterized as a branch of mathematics dealing with countable sets. Okay. Finite sets are sets with the same cardinality as natural numbers. 
D discrete math describes less by what is included than by what is excluded. I understand all these words, but I obviously need to. Oh, is that graph theory is, uh... whoops, I just downloaded it. Oh, continuous calculus. Okay, discrete. Right, so, and calculus is like vectors, right? Or like shapes, sines. Sines, cosines, tangents, that's calculus, right? It's been a while. Interesting. Uh, add yet another thing to look at. My list of things to do is high. Yeah, I don't remember my calculus. It's been so long. Finding the rates and sums of things. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and relook that stuff up. Like, I get rate of a slope. Incident velocity is derivative. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to go look that. Well, actually, I'm probably, I'll be frank. I'm probably not going to go look that stuff up. <laughs> I may I may glance past it again, but um, that's I'm not going to do a deep dive on calculus. I don't think at this point uh, that's not where. Well, I don't know. I'll look at it a little bit and see if I get interested in it. Who knows? <laughs> I was getting that impression that you like the maths, which is cool. I uh, I like the the feeling of math, but I don't do as much of the detail. Like I like things that fit together well. Math obviously fits together well, or at least the math that I know. There's probably math that's way out there that maybe is weird and not fits together well, but that is not the math level that I'm at. Um, also, I like music, and so some of the mathematics of music I find really intriguing, even though I don't, I know very li little about them. Um, All right, we're going to try and really split this stuff out and see what happens. Uh, so we want to give it a path. Test data v4. I don't think we got an mp3 in there yet. We do not. We gotta make one. mp3. Plural. Wait, why didn't that change? Directory viewer name, occurrences found in comments, strings, 11, what? Just change it. All right, let's go find our other MP3, test data MP3s, test one MP3, four MP3s, go. MP3s, test one MP3. So that's gonna break because we're sending, no, it didn't break. Oh, we're not doing any tests yet.
Test duration. 100. We're just making up numbers at this point. 100. Let's get a pass. No, failed. Ah, now it's failing because we aren't doing that. Oops. Definite self go. Um, oops, we're going to actually pass an explicit file path self file path equals file path. See if that makes them happy again. There we go, passed. Oh, that's a very good question. Yes, of course there is. There are tons of Python FFmpeg wrappers out there, but they seem to be lacking complex filter support. Works well for simple purposes, as well as complex sing signal graphs. OK. Flip is video. Whoa. Wow, if you could get them drawn like this all the time, that'd be awesome. Like if you could just assemble it visually, oh, that would be so cool. Jupyter Lab, notebook stream editor. Look at that. When in doubt, look at the examples. Yeah. That's super trippy. TensorFlow stuff. Roar. That's either really cool or really nightmarey. Either way, it's really trippy. Flow based programming. I can't type. programming paradigm that defines applications as networks of black boxes process as black box processes to exchange data across predefined connections passing around. okay let's look up some videos because i want to see somebody do it what is flow based programming yeah it's a awful haunted grocery store like if you're on LSD, that would either be awesome or terrifying, or both. Flow-based programming is a graphical way of creating computer programs with flows instead of lines of code. So these flows are a network of black boxes, which are a series of functions which perform a specific task and have an input and output, or sometimes both. Using flow-based programming, you can create connections between each of these components by connecting the output of one with the input of another to oh. create various different applications. The approach is different, but the result is similar to when a user expresses to the machine what they want to do, and the computer takes these instructions and executes them just the same as it would with text-based code. With this style of programming, you can add, remove, and string together different components to get different outcomes and functionalities. And having a visual representation makes it more accessible to a wide range of users to easily create applications without having to write multiple lines of code. Yep. So we actually use some of this. So we use some um, we use some different tools for doing different things, but one of them is this one called Altrix. But that's exactly what this is. That generates sales data. So you just you get all these modules and you just link you just hook them together. Um, and it's, it's actually really impressive because like when I look at it, I'm like, 
I don't understand it yet because I haven't actually looked at it, but like some of our analysts do really complicated stuff through this that you could do with programming too or whatever. It's a little bit threatening. No, it's fine. Um, but that's that's what this is, right? Flow based because you're just taking graphical chunks, moving together, and like you know here you can see I don't know if you can see, um, but this one has two inputs. Um, so this one has two inputs, this one has two outputs, but only one of them is being used. This one has, and so there's different types of inputs, different types of outputs. They can access environmental variables. It's, I mean, it's, it's a language, uh, or it's a, not a language. It's a flow, I guess. Um, but yeah, it, it's really, it's really interesting. Like the, the stuff that I've seen people do who wouldn't consider themselves programmers and who are like scared of code. And I'm like, I'm looking at these incredibly complicated things that they're doing. I'm like, I got news for you. <laughs> the logic that you're applying is the exact same thing that you would apply as if you were doing it in like straight code and Python or whatever, you're just doing it graphically. The only thing you would have to do to apply this into Python or to whatever your language is, is learn the syntax. Yeah, no, it's, it's super neat. Um, I, yeah, I, I totally, I'm totally on board with it. The, and it's going to be interesting to see as tools like Alteryx and, and their like get better and open source. Cause Alteryx costs money. Alteryx costs money. Like the, the thing that I'm more worried about. So I think it's really cool that we're pushing that we have the potential to push that direction. And I think that will happen some inevitably. The thing that I'm wondering about is the data that people will be able to use. So there's kind of this back and forth, right? With APIs about companies offering APIs or not offering APIs or whatever. Um, lots of times like, you know, Twitter started out with a completely open API and then slowly but surely they've been mushing it down a bunch. Um, I don't think Facebook has a really good content API. API. I don't know. Um, I know that we get stuff out of it, but I don't know. I think it's actually, no, actually that's wrong. It's pretty good, I think. But like, that would be the real trick, right? Is, is getting the data in and data out to actually play with and program with. Um, and that's where I wonder how, how much things gonna get proprietary locked down or if that's gonna happen more or not. Um, but we shall see. Uh, I, like the, uh, I like the idea of like, just giant collections of APIs hanging out there. Um, and then people being able to use them and having tools like Aldrix or having, to, ha having ways to use them. Um, the, my big thing is like, I, I like for people to be able to tell the computer what to do instead of the computer always being in charge, computer being your phone too. Right. Um, cause I think once, once people kind of start getting a little bit of a taste of that, it changes your brain a little bit. That's my I take anyways. Um, so MP3 dot duration. Duration turn 100 passing passing. Nope. We're on the wrong file. Passing, passing. We're definitely passing because we're calling the wrong thing. Should have actually made it fail. We're gonna make it fail first. Make sure it's... There you go, 100, 101. Bring it back, passing. All right, so that gets our duration. This makes more sense. This is easier to do, splitting stuff out. I like this. Right, yeah. Well, and like the, it it is a little bit interesting for me to kind of watch it, because like people still think I do magic whenever I do Python, but I'm getting the same inputs they could get and making the same outputs they could get. Like you know, it's all just again, it's all just ones and zeros under there. But they don't see that yet. Um, but I like the fact, but and but they also don't see the fact that they're doing the same thing. Like it's, 
I try and show them. I'm, I'm like, look, this you're doing the same thing here. You're, you're talking to APIs, you're producing the stuff. Please don't fire me because I feel like you still need me, but. Yeah, DSLs, um, yeah, there are, so in Ruby, one of the test, I think it's RSpec maybe, is a DSL that, if I remember right, it's written in Ruby, right? But it's its own, it's, it's its own language on top of Ruby specifically for testing. Oh, I'm gonna get copyright hit with all these videos. By training professionals today, Anna uses IT information. Smart software gathers data from all the restaurants in the gym to present it as graphs and tables, so Anna can see the whole picture and make decisions on business management and expansion. To manipulate these programs, Anna usually contacts Jim, the software developer. <laughs> it always takes time and effort from both Jim and Anna to communicate and understand each other's changing innovations. And if for some reason Jim quits, Anna is in trouble. All that work invested into a central comprehension will have to be done once again with a new developer. Work gets much easier when MPS comes in. JetBrains MPS is an open source tool to express your domain specifics in the form of a programming language. Here's how it works. A language designer creates a unique domain specific language. Hello! Containing How goes it? To it's a decent lot. Nice. We're learning about their names. Domain specific languages, real quick. One well, specifically, uh, JetBrains is MPS. Hanging in there. Pretty good, actually. Got the window open a little bit. Nice little breeze coming in. Chilling out. Figure uh, I'm learning about all kinds of new stuff here. Like this very complicated MPS stuff where you make new languages. Express your domain processing and knowledge in a language that directly uses the concepts and logic for your particular field. That's pretty slick, actually. Yeah, so... That's really... Yeah, that is, right, sir? The, we're, we've just been talking uh, about languages and computers and stuff in general, and uh, Victor was talking about these... Um, which you may not have seen him in chat yet, but he's in chat. Um, these DSLs, which I, I'd seen one before in Ruby. The I think it's the RSpec language that they use for testing is a domain specific language. Um, but I've never seen this. This is really cool. I wanna play with this. Cause we were also talking about flow, um, flow programming. Yeah, yeah, no. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Like, and again, I'm doing like Python right now, um, which is you know mid-tier language or whatever. But um, I just kind of want to know how all this stuff works. I want to play with all the tools and all the toys, uh, and then figure out which ones the that I want to play with for any given thing, right? Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to tend towards things like Python or whatever. Um, I, it's, Python's my current my current main focus for working on stuff. Um, yeah, but we we're also talking about like the, the flow based stuff where you can have people just make connections of graphical objects that makes things go. Yeah, each language has an issue. I'd buy that. I would 100% buy that. Um, all right, we're going to steal code from the other one because we already have this work in a little bit. Uh, unless we go to the wrong place, we went to the wrong place. Where's our exif stuff? There it is. Duration. Nope. Okay, gotta do this. So we need to import sub process. Oh, 
assembly. Wow. That's... I've, I've seen assembly before. And, like, gotten just the barelyest bit about my head around it. Because that's, like, putting stuff on registers and pulling it off, right? And, like, shifting and all that stuff. Like, I remember, I remember looking at it a little bit. Um, but that's well beyond my, uh, my ken. Uh, Victor, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I've kind of fallen out of the following tech stuff these days. Um, I'll check out and see what's coming on with it, but, like, I'm not, I'm not as psyched about the Apple stuff or, like, any big tech events as, as I used to be. Like, my phone's a few years old now. My computer's five years old now. I've crossed the threshold where most of the stuff works most of the time, so, like, I'm interested, but, like, Teaching self iOS, yeah. Analog control systems. Wow, that's super impressive. What's what's harder, the digital or what's more challenging, the digital or the analogs? I'm gonna guess analogs. Oh yeah, yeah, they're going to arms, right? Is that what's gonna happen? Ooh, assembly. There you go. Oh, whoops. I should put that over here. Sorry, this thing fires to the different browser because I keep uh, chat in a different browser just to, so I don't accidentally close it. The analog. Okay, that was going to be my guess, right? Because the digital... You're, I'm, this is a guess, right? You're get, But you're getting either ones and zeros from the system. But the analog, or is that, or does that matter in terms of the control? I like, I don't know enough about it at all. Um, who uses ARM actually? So microcontrollers in general, or like, do you use? So is, I'm guessing if you do that type of work, you're not using Raspberry Pis and Adrenos. You're probably using like the industry ones, whatever those are, um, or whichever ones those are. I don't know them. I've got a, I played with an Arduino once just for the, like one of those little like hackathon, not hackathon, but like, um, those little workshops you could go to at meetups. I forget what those are called. Um, which I don't really know if they still do anymore. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, so and interference. Oh, I didn't think about interference. Oh, interesting. Uh, like I can, I can barely think about how that would work. <laughs> oh, also the windows open. So the gnats are getting in, um, my screen's busted, uh, which I should fix at some point if I'm gonna have the window open, but later, this is cool. See y'all give me so much stuff to read. I need a sabbatical. I'm gonna put that in books. Yeah, that code. So, Victor, that code book I was talking about earlier, and uh, sir, there's a. We we're talking earlier. There's a book called Code: The Hidden Language of Computers. This nope. This one. Um, I'll put back in chat. That talks. It basically starts you with the ones and zeros of like an on-off switch, and then a relay, and then gets you to logic gates, and then it eventually gets into assembly language, um, for this stuff too. So we we're just talking about that. So you're, we're right in line with the conversation. Aliens. It's magic. It's all magic. You don't. You wouldn't be interested. It's you know. Uh, I, I, yeah. It's all just ones and zeros, right? Once you get down to it. Well, except for your analog stuff. That's once you hit the digital level. I'm I'm with you. I we can we can talk at the digital level. Analog stuff. Uh, until you get the AD conversion going, I'm uh, I'm a little lost. Um. Do I do have a? I do have a DAC for my stereo going the other way, digital analog, but uh, actually I guess I've got 
Well, this is going over in it. ADC, right? Because this is coming in analog. Somewhere there's a converter going back, right? A 3-bit GPU. Why 3 bits? Why not 2 or 4? See, now you're talking my language, Victor, because my computer is five years old. And like getting a five, getting a computer now would be a huge jump. But getting one that's even, you know, jumping past that would that would feel like magic. So like and it's. I don't know, though, there's that whole thing about like, I got to go reinstall everything and get everything set back up and like. It's like a week's worth of work to get everything halfway lined up. Not to install, but just to get it like going again. Oh, okay. So, so three bits was basically crossing. Like, if you can do three, you could do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You just you that was the threshold to say you got you got your you got in your head. Yep, <laughs> flipping colors. That's awesome. The so we so I started doing web dev in the early '90s, or in the '90s, whatever. I mean, kind of when it first started or whatever. But it was kind of crazy too, because at that point, semi-related. Um, lots of monitors only had 256 colors, so you had to be you had to watch out for when you were designing. Uh, that you didn't pick a tone that was in between the two of them because it would basically stipple itself out. Um, but then the other one like that too is like GIFs, right? So taking an image and then doing the calculations to say, if I get a palette set of colors for any particular GIF, what colors do I want to choose to give it the best representation? Because originally with the GIFs, it was always the same 256 colors. And so the computer would just kind of get as close as possible. Most of them look like crap. But now we've got the gifts that you can go through, well, A, animated, but B, that can actually get a specific color palette. And the fact that you can do, like, the psychology behind the fact that this is only 256 colors is blows me away. I'm pretty sure it's only 256 colors, right? I'm not making that up. GIF. Color palette. Yeah, up to 256 colors. And actually, I don't know. I'm assuming that's all one color palette for all the frames. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Can I have an animated GIF with more than 256 colors per frame? Yes, you can with certain limitations. Oh, whoa, okay. GIF supports per frame local palettes. Okay, so you can do it per palette, or per frame. Okay, that's cool. That makes more sense. Catches you can only take it when not all pixels of the image channel between frames. So if you have something moving in front of a still background, but the background could be composed of several. With clever devouring, it's even possible to reuse some pixels. Okay. So anyways, that was the top level question is that you can actually have there each frame has its own color palette. Yeah, uh, like I can't imagine the math behind that. And like the same thing for me that the, the biggest one that still throws me a little bit is like if you take an image and you put it in Photoshop of a bunch of lines and then you cut one pixel off of the width, they still make the lines look like lines because it feels like, you know, if, if they're lined up in binary columns, how do you how do you shift them? And of course, part of it is we've got big enough images now that you can do that with, but when they were smaller images, the math and the dithering and the um, anti-aliasing and all the other math that they would do behind that stuff, that's the, the psychology of perception, is just blows me away. 
same thing with color gamma and like color spaces like i still don't get it's just all over the place um but yeah but the cool thing is right people solve that once and we all get to use it so whatever problem we have now if somebody solves that we get the modules right we get the we get the we get the code like ffmpeg is what i'm using right now giant video assembly program or whatever and it's like all i gotta do is figure out how to run a command just amazing love it um cool see you victor have a good one we'll see you around man be safe be kind be easy yeah you too i'll be back on i don't know nine o'clock or something later if you're around but or later you know how it goes uh, all right, we need RE. Match. Yeah, so, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm making, uh, I've got a whole bunch of audio tracks that are free audio tracks from YouTube's library. And I want to make music, I want to put videos underneath them. So I'm writing a script that goes and gets videos from NASA's video and image API, pulls them down, cuts them up, and then reassembles them randomly to make music videos. I guess I don't need to put quotes around that. They're like just random music videos. So that's where all this is. Um, it's, I could have written the code 10 times over, but uh, I'm kind of doing some TDD stuff and really kind of, I don't have a huge amount of TDD experience. so. This is a lot of this is me just trying to figure out what to do and how to test it and how to make it go. Um, so just as a backstory about what's going on um, and where I'm headed. Uh, whoop, and failing tests. That's what I'm doing. MP3 path. We need an MP3 path. How about we call it file path? All right, test passing. So match. Oh, we got to do the math. And so I'm grabbing the <clears throat> the way that what I'm doing right now is I've got an MP3 file that's the source song. And so I need to get the duration of that so I know how many clips to put in and how many clips to cut up in a symbol. Yeah, and that's that's kind of that's a big thing that I'm doing right now is with these little projects is using them as experience and practice um, and figuring out how to kind of see things and flex muscles. Also, I need to read more books because the problems I'm running into, I sh I'm sure, are solved problems. I'm fighting my way through them right now because I kind of like doing that a little bit. Um, but also I need to go, but I'm getting to the point where it's like, let me go, just go look up how people have solved this problem before. Because um, I don't, I'm, I don't need to reinvent the wheel, basically. Uh, so here is all this. So here's our match. I'm just stealing code that I wrote the, the first time through. So this is just grabbing the duration. Um, EXIF tool lets you see inside an MP3 and it gives you durations um, that are hour, minute, second. So I'm just taking those and assembling it into seconds here by grabbing the data times 60 for minutes and then seconds. And if I return total seconds, this is going to fail because the numbers are different. Yep, 106 versus 100, so it's actually 106. So if we put that there and test that, there we go. So we've got a duration. Um, so I've got my file path and I've got my duration. I think that's really all I want from the MP3. I should actually commit some of the stuff I haven't committed in forever. Starting V4, whatever. I just moved, I'd moved a whole bunch of stuff. So it's kind of all over the place right now. Um, all right, so that's the MP3. I've got my video assembler. So really the next thing that I want is the video. New file, test video, video, pi. Yes, please. User bin, environment, Python 3. Today has not been my best uh, typing day. Unit test, test case. Just 
Let's pass it. If name main we're gonna run unit test main no tests no tests just run a whoops what was that happening there just run a tone test one test passed the basics of testing for file.io are just file.io and low level assembly stuff which way are you talking? Sup, def sup. From From video, import video. That's gonna explode. No module name video. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't make it yet. That's why. Wah -wah. Video pi. Yes, please. Vlast is like class. Video. Def and it pass just to give it something to do. There you go, passing. Oh, right, right, gotcha. Yeah, so I started in Perl and it had a really weird way of doing it. I, I really like Python's the way that you open stuff with Python, just like with open file name, like that clicks in my head pretty well. Um, but test, testing it's always just weird because I'm trying, like, I used to try and test a whole bunch of stuff on the file system, like if I wrote out a bunch of files, but like then I'm just testing writing to the file system and like that's pretty well tested code in Python. So it, I'm trying to figure out how to test the step before that when I need to. Um, and that's one of the things I'm struggling with here is like how, how to poke at it in the right ways to test the things that I are valuable to test and not test the things that are already well tested. Um, and also like I've got some random stuff happening and the randomness is throwing me too because I don't have a way of like saying, given this input, you will get that output. Um, even though I've, I've realized that you can actually pass random a seed and have it be repeatable. So when I get into that, that's probably what's going on. <laughs> Syn syntax, yeah, I'm with you. Um, it took me a while. I'm now used to it. I kind of like it, but mostly I don't think about it, which I think is fine, right? It's not, I'm not, it doesn't fight me for the most part. Um, I've been using this PyCharm editor, which does really good jobs of making sure, because like the, the thing that I ran into a bunch was the tab stuff, um, where every now and then I'd copy something and paste it and it would decide it was gonna use spaces and everything would blow up because it was tabs and spaces. And Python doesn't do that. Um, but the but the overall, I just, I kinda of don't notice it. Um, and that's fine. When I did, I did some Ruby stuff for a while and I really, when I first started doing that, I really liked the way that that worked. Um, but it's actually been a few years since I've done Ruby, so I don't remember why I liked it. Uh, I just remember liking it. Um, what's your, uh, do you have a favorite syntax or do you have a favorite language? Um, either from aesthetics or from functionality or just ease of use. All right, tester passing. So video. So I guess we need to pass it a URL. Might as well give it a real URL. Mm, no, let's not give it a real URL. Yet. So this is gonna bomb because it doesn't like it without the URL. That's cool. We can fix that and close these. Get 
back to just parts we're working on. Where'd my neck out here? Let's switch these back. There we go. URL self URL equals URL. Now we should be passing again. Okay, so that gives us the URL. We don't need to test the function to go get the file. What we do want an output path. Oh, crap. The output path needs to be based off of a hash of... So we need an output directory or storage directory. which we're going to put in test data v4 4 new directory video storage c++ okay so i've i've never used pointers um i've never i did a few weeks of a C++ course in college, um, but then didn't go to it anymore. Um, and I, I don't have that much experience with, with object oriented. Um, I just don't have that much experience actually at all, uh, considering how long I've been around the industry. But uh, yeah, I've just, I've never played with them. Um, I, don't, I don't really have a concept of them. Uh, the, I do OOP and, or yeah, objects, I guess, in Python, or classes and objects in Python. Um, I did a, so I did a bunch of Perl stuff, all procedural and functional way back. And then I found a library called Moose that lets you like build object oriented Perl that was ugly. I would not recommend it. It worked, but man, it was not good looking at all. And I wrote, so I wrote some code and I wrote a bunch of stuff in it, but um, went back and looked at it, I don't know, a couple of years back and was just like horrified. One, I didn't really know what I was doing with object oriented stuff. Two, the code just, it's not pretty. Um, and the combination of those two things was not pretty. Worked though. So check uh storage directory okay so just the storage directory well actually hang on a second before we do that see this is where i'm trying to figure out the best way to test this because i don't need test video <laughs> right I, I don't know. Yeah, and I go back. I like. I'm not a big fan of the word expert in general. To me, if you can make the thing happen in the time that you have to make it happen, that's success. If you walk into a thing and you don't know at all what you're doing, then yeah, work through. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, so like, and then the other thing too, right? For you talking about practice earlier, right? That's, it's all just practice. Like, even like, so if you're practicing without doing specific things, or if you're practicing doing it, like you're all just gaining experience and gaining knowledge. So like the doing it more is how you figure out how to do it more. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the expert label. Execution, that's it. Can I make the thing do the thing that I want it to do? Can I make the thing do the thing? That's uh, my goal. That's like this, right? So like, I've got no deadline on this. So for me, it's not about going and doing the assembly of the video as much as it is building it in a way that I wouldn't have to test my ability to come up with tests and my ability to do some object oriented stuff and split stuff out in ways that I wouldn't have before. Like that's my purpose here. My purpose is not to instantly make the thing happen. Cause like I said, like I, I could write procedural code for this in no time. 
um, or even functional based, whatever. And then also untested code because it's not that complicated, but that's not the goal. So I'm doing this. Uh, all right, so we got the video. So, and this is where I'm looking for the breakpoint of the path or the breakpoint of what I want to test because so output file path. Storage path, what do I want to call this? I'm also into names a lot. Um, video storage path, path, let's try path. Another test in there? No, video storage path. So what I'm going to be looking for is test data v4 video storage. And I'm going to have a hash in there. No, I'm going to have a and then a hash and then original dot mp4 or dot yeah mp4 that's fine so this is gonna puke because i'm not there that's fine paste this in here so that that just verifies that the test works and now v dot video storage path this is gonna puke because that doesn't exist that's cool we can make that exist Now it's going to puke because the values aren't the same. Oh, not, not going to puke yet because we're not calling it actual. Now it's going to puke. There it goes. But if we put this in here, oops, should pass. There you go. I don't like that name that much, but we're going to deal with it right now. Still passing, still passing. All right, so now we want to make that happen. So first thing we need to do and this is where I need to figure out like where the test level goes. Do you dig making test cases? Cause I like, I kind of like the feeling of it, like in terms of like getting the refinedness of the thing of like, here is the essence of what I'm trying to do. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes tedious, right? But like when I'm working, it it's the like reverse engineering of the problem. I find fires off serotonin and dopamine in my head or whichever one, I can't remember which. All right, I'm not going to test anything internally. Oh, right on. How long you had your gig? Are you like a week new or like a few months new or like? So video storage path. Okay, let's start putting stuff in to make that happen. So video storage directory, video storage root. Is that? All right, so that's gonna bomb. 
right? Because we don't have this yet. Now it should pass, passing. And then the other thing that's cool about that is we should be able to drop this in here. Boom, got it. One month, oh, okay, full-time intern, C congratulations. Good stuff. That's uh, a good, a, getting your foot in the door. That's awesome. Uh, you fresh out of school or are you, where are you school on your intern and career timeline and school timeline? I know you're just talking about one of your classes. That's why I'm asking. Um, I wasn't sure if that was like last year or a year ago or how long. Second semester of sophomore year. Oh, so you got an intern in your sophomore year. Wow. Congrats. Good stuff. That's really solid. Um, I, I tell you, internships, if you can, you have snagged one. That is a huge leg up. So absolutely congratulations on that. Um, <laughs> don't mess it up. <laughs> it, it, I think it's, I think it's hard for an, like, unless you like really mess up, don't worry too much about that. But like, you know, going in and pooping on the head of HR's desk, don't do that. All right, so we're not going to test any. Oh, they only said he didn't graduate. Oh, that's awesome. That's huge. That's really slick. And you're so are you and you're doing actual stuff, right? So if you're writing code and writing tests, it's not an internship of like, go get coffee, go get coffee. Um, you're actually doing some work, huh? That's really slick. That's a great position to be in. Uh, URL hash full equals so we're just going to hash the URL. We're going to steal that code too. That's the wrong place again. Oh, I didn't get it in that one. Must have done it in this one. Video assembler. Where's the hash stuff? Video random at. Was I not hashing here? Surely I was. <laughs> Benefits. <laughs> That's a whole other thing, isn't it? You need to do five three month internships. Can they be? Can they all be at the same place? I would hope so. Especially if that other place, if the place you're at, wants you to stay. Hashlib, here it is. Hashlib, that's what I was looking for. Okay, that's good. That makes perfect sense. Like, yeah, if if. If they want to have you stick there and because you're there's that learning curve and that initial hump to get over every time you enter a new thing. So not having to do that is awesome. Video, 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 video. Where's our hash? Here's our URL hash. We can actually just grab that right there. Do that right there. Do that right there. Do that right there. Do 
So this gets a URL hash, and the reason we want that, and then def URL hash initial character self equals. I can just call it twice. Who cares? Self dot that return self dot that. uh that and we want the first character and so that'll populate these oops why is that angry oh because that's there Self your ash initial character. All right, so this is gonna blow up because that all that stuff is different. Oh, I got it backwards. Doot, doot. Still gonna blow up because that's our hash, but that's our path now. So if we put that, where's our test? Uh, right here. And then test, we win. That's a really good position to be in. That's awesome. Congratulations. I just got to do the work, right? But it sounds like you're doing the work. It sounds like you're interested in doing the work. So that's a good play. How do you write tests for analog controllers? So, are you? I'm lost on how to do that. <laughs> yeah, just don't screw it up. Which, and also, if you make minor screw ups, don't worry too much about it. But don't avoid the big ones. Um, which so far chatting to you, I, I think you're going to be just fine. I can tell these things across text. All right, so we've got our path. So we're just going to pull it in and spit it out. I like this. This is good. They're written to test to make sure meets customer. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I'm with you on the why of the tests, but like, how do you like assuming it's I'm whatever, but if it's a thing that spins, is it like saying if I give it a signal to tell it to spin one time, then I have some type of physical mechanism that watches it to say it spins one time or like I just don't know where the test like where the test framework looks like the state transition diagram is not a thing I know whoa all the states that an object can have the event under which it changes I have a giant thing here whatever Commissions must be fulfilled before the transition will occur, guards, and the activities undertaken during the life of an object, actions. Oh, well, that's cool. Looks super complicated like this. Describes all the states that an object can have. Okay, right, right, okay. The events under which an object changes state, so it transitions between one thing and the other. Okay, I'm with you. So it can either be here or here, and then... There's a condition in which it moves. The condition must be fulfilled before transition occurs. So like something has to happen over here before that can happen. And the activity is undertaken during the lifetime of an object. That one I'm lost on. It does back and forth much. 
Simulation testing, software testing, hardware testing. Okay, okay, okay. I gotcha. I was trying to I was trying to move all of that stuff into one thing. Which I guess when you're hardware testing, there's software that's involved or whatever, but like I can kind of see separation concerns there. Sticky mines. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that's how you watch for errors. I'm with you. Yeah, so you need you need an outside observer. If you're doing a hardware thing, you have to have an outside observer of some type to do the detection to make sure to to be your observer to then provide feedback into the test software that, or to the test harness that says passed failed, right? I gotcha. That makes sense. Oh, okay. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. So given given this, these are the things, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, so given given this, if this, this should happen. Given this, if this, this should happen. Given this, if this, this should happen, right? So you've got the states. The possible states, the transitions, the guards, okay, and then the actions. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's really slick. That's really, okay. I like that abstraction a lot. UML models. Okay, right. So I'm self-taught with all this stuff. Um, and I really, I kind of want to go back to the fundamentals with some of this stuff. And like, I just want to stack of books and a bunch of time to read them is really what I want. Um, so by the time I retire, I will be able to learn more about computers. Uh, but actually I'm trying to, I'm trying to put time into that every day a little bit, even though I've been not doing that at all recently. Um, Cause I've been streaming a lot. Oh, I totally believe that. Yeah, yeah. So it makes the gun more visual. I totally believe that because I was already starting to map those ideas or those uh, states, those yeah, those ideas onto software, like onto the stuff that I'm doing right now, right? So like I've got I've got the state of this particular video which is right now the state of it is um, it has a URL and it has an output path, but it doesn't actually have the video. So I need it to do an action of going and getting the video. And then the guard on that would be, it has to actually have the URL that's in there in order to go get that, I think. Um, and then the, the transition is like, the next state would be, I've got the video. And so the transition is going and getting the thing and then transitioning to the point of when the when the video exists. Is that close? That's how it works in my brain. Oh, that's angry. It's probably global variable V is the undefined in module legends right there. Um So we've got our pet. Okay, yeah, so I'm not gonna test anything internally. I'm just gonna fire this stuff up and see what's gonna happen. Yeah, cool, okay. All right, <laughs> I've learned partially a thing today. Um. Oh, I just realized, whoops, you know it would be better? So I did that. I put, the GIF is new down there. Um, it used to be up here, um, but now it's hanging out down in the corner. And I didn't move the chat. Now I've moved the chat. All right, here's where the testing gets weird. Um, so I, I do know that I want a video clips path.
which is going to be this. With the word clips. Actual, and then we run our test. So this is going to pass because we've got it hard coded. And then we're going to do V video clips path. Eh, a few days. Um, like, well, so the, the overall project in terms of like the idea of like getting the videos and like the other thing has been in my head for a while. Actually doing this, um, I probably got about a week into it, but some of that was time spent figuring out how to use FFmpeg to do the, to cutting the things apart and then to do the reassembly and finding transitions. So like this part of going, and then some of it was just a little bit of time figuring out how to use the NASA API. That was actually really simple. Um, so I don't know, a week. Uh, and again, this is one of those, I, if you really wanted to burn through this, you could do it in a night. Um, especially once you've got the, the biggest trick, the, the thing that I spent the most legitimate time on was coming up with the FFmpeg command. Um, and I spent a bunch of time doing a bunch of clip stuff, but then later I found another one that just does it for you called scene detect. So like, that was an hour and a half that just, yeah, oh well. Um, and then doing the assembly, it took some time uh, because I was doing some FFmpeg stuff for that. But then later I found another thing called FFmpeg concat that does it for you automatically. So again, it was like, but I, I couldn't have found the later things until I had gone through all the searching of the first things. At least I didn't, maybe I could have. Um, but like once you know, once you've got those commands, the rest of it, just banging off the API and doing the cut and doing the assembly, it's not bad at all. Um, but again, this is all just the the exercise of setting up. How would I test this? How would I design this? Or how am I designing it? Um, so that's a very long answer for, I don't know, a week. And I'm probably, and so I, I feel, and so this, basically this run through, because this is my fourth version of it. Um, this is going to be my final version of it. Like, I'm just going to make this one go because uh, I'm ready to move on with other stuff. Uh, and I feel like I've, I feel like I've, you know, it's like the third time the charm. This this case, the fourth, fourth time is the charm. Uh, like, I'm ready. I've, I've got my head around it enough that I've got, I'm not going to make giant steps doing more on the same thing. Oh, thanks, man. It's uh, it's that's a uh, I appreciate the compliment. Um, and it's a fun little project. Uh, and it's just one of those. It, it's actually in support of another project that I want to do. Where I need video, I need audio up on YouTube that's copyright free because I want to try and build a sync thing that lets people listen to the same YouTube songs. Basically. The goal is I can be broadcasting on Twitch. I can have a YouTube playlist going and you can actually listen to the same playlist at the same time. But if I post that video to YouTube, I don't get copyright struck for all the video for all the audio. I don't know an SHP file. By the way, CSV files are 80% of the time they're fine, but man, if you walk into that 20% where they're not, oh, good lord. We, I have to deal with those a decent amount. Oh, shape format file. Uh, wait a minute. I think we used some of this. Yeah, shape files. Okay, I didn't know that was the extension. Yeah, we use some of that. I don't. Other people I know do. I had to do a project turning 3D coordinates into 2D coordinates. Um, that was fun. Like, 
somebody just gave me the formula. It was formulas about yay long. Um, all I had to do was get the right numbers in the right places or whatever. I did not do the math, but it was a fun little like going back through and like trying to remember like, oh, yeah, sines and cosines and like all this other stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The <sighs> CSVs, man, they're just they're the way of the world, but ugh, they can be awful. I had one that was, I was getting data coming down from a system and it was like, say it was five different CSV files. Three of them were just regular CSV files and they were fine. The fourth and the fifth one, they put quotations around the entire line. So as far as the CSV processors were concerned with quotes, it was one column for each one, for each row. So we had to like come up with this panda stuff to go split it out and like do all this other jazz. And it was just like, not fun. Yeah. Python doesn't like it when you do that. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've never, I've never had to flip over to floats um, like that. Yeah. Ugh. Get it, get it for me in a database with the fine data types, please. Make it, make me happy. Uh, video clips path. Okay, so video clips path. So we're gonna do. Okay, so that's just gonna work here because we're passing. Sweet. And now we can do this, which is gonna break. Which we expect video clips path equals our path return video video clips path go we should be green again there we go so now so that's really the only things that i need to have happen here if i don't want to test the rest of the stuff because i don't really need to test the hash like that's just doing the hash function. I don't really need to like, yeah, that's just the, the final output. So I need to know the directories. And then really, I just need to run the commands. I mean, that's what it amounts to, right? Yeah, I like this a lot. Okay, so that's separation of church and state with a video that it can be its own thing. <laughs> strings. Yeah, yeah, they're all strings, right? Everything, everything coming in in CSV is string. Um, the, uh, if you didn't use it, uh, pandas, if you have to run into CSV again, um, I think the pandas library has some handling for that kind of stuff. Uh, I think I used it for some stuff at work recently. And I can't remember, but I think it helped. I think it can give, give you a fighting chance with CSV. Uh, I mean, the CSV module can as well, but. Um, CSV. Yeah, read CSV. I think it tries to make some educated guesses about the data formats of the columns and or you can assign the data formats of the columns type name or dictive column type optional data type for data columns yeah so you can basically so you can give it the data types that you want to have for each individual column um, and then it'll it'll split that or it'll translate it for you into the into the expected data type Yeah, it's, it's a good one. I, I've only recently used it, but a guy that I know who does a bunch of data stuff is just like, use this. Um, I've always just used the, the standard Python CSV library, but after using pandas, that's where I'm headed. Yeah, so we've got our paths. So... Actually, I guess what I should do. Test video. Uh, 
So let's actually run one and just see. Oh, I need to actually make the command to Python 4, my favorite. From video import video. V equals video. And we need to pass it the URL. Which we're going to get our test data somewhere. We're going to use this one and see how that goes. And we need a video storage root directory, which is an incredibly long name. Which from here is going to go into video data v4 video storage okay this is gonna fail the first time i run it um actually no it's not this should run right if name main the oops oh yeah i should just put that down here I gotcha. So is your CS stuff like the CS engineering stuff or like, pro is it like, cause I've heard that there's like, are you programming applications or are you programming like at the computer level? Um, I guess that's the question. Like, are you doing like bubble sort or are you doing like, I'm making objects and classes and stuff. Also, I got to go in just a couple minutes. So video, and then we do video. Get and clip, which is not a thing. So this is going to fail. Wow, okay. I I have a passing interest in the hardware stuff, but n like I've got so much other software stuff that I'm interested in that it's just, it's unlikely to happen. In like, in, well, until I find a project that I wanna mess with and I need to do hardware stuff. That's the way that I basically work is I end up wanting to do a thing and if I don't know how to do the thing or how to do the things to get to the thing, I try and go figure it out. Um, sometimes that works better than others, but that's kind of the approach I take. So, um, and so far it's worked out all right. Uh, getting clip, getting clip, getting clip. So we're gonna grab Yeah, so we're not gonna test this either. We're gonna trust that the code that we know works should work. Get MP3 duration, we don't need that. Get video duration, we don't need that. Get video, load raw, none of that's helpful. Test video, test simulator. There we go. Well, this is what we want. Oops, get out of there. Video. FPGAs. Uh, don't know what that is. Oh, I've heard of field programmable get arrays before. 
don't really have a concept of what they are. I mean, it's a ray of logic gates, I'm guessing. So the applications, circuits, diagrams, programmable logic blocks. Okay. So you can, yeah, okay. So you can make like many logic gates that can be interwired in different configurations. Okay, logic blocks can be configured to perform complex combinational functions from really simple logic gates and in Zor. Logic blocks also include memory. Okay. Maybe simple flip flops or complete blocks of memory. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah, at some point in my life, I'm going to mess around with these. Maybe when I retire. VHDL. Whoops. VHDLL. Yes, I meant VHDL. Very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language. Oh, oh, okay. I got you. So that's the language. Hard description language. Whoops. Describe digital and mixed signal systems. So that would be mixed signals, analog, digital. Oh, parallel programming language. Okay. Lots of IE. IE. Key advantage is it allows all is it allows the behavior of the required system to be described, modeled, and verified, simulated before synthesis tools translate the design into real hardware. Okay. Okay, yeah, so you can you can test it in the ether instead of having to build stuff. And then once you're ready, then you can actually build it. So hopefully you catch all your bugs before you burn it into hardware. That's cool. Slick. Oh, it has a type system? Oh, big advantage of your Credit to Verilog as if VHDL has a full type system. Nice. Code samples. Use standard logic all. This is an entity. And gate is port, I'm guessing input one, input two, and output. Oh, yeah, in. So this is setting variables, I'm guessing. Architecture RTL of AND gate. Don't know what RTL is. Begin. O is less than or equal to I1 and I2. Or is that an assignment? RTL, register transfer level design. Okay. Many parts are either optional or need to be written only once. Interesting. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like I love I love the levels of abstraction of abstraction. I mean that's what it's all about, right? So I I stop at the at the metal, right? Uh, at the ones and zeros. I don't go into the analog realm. Um but I appreciate that they're there and the craziness that has to happen to make that happen. Import OS. From pathlib. Import path. Okay. 
Let's spell import properly. So getting clips, I don't really need to call this because I can just call these this way. Self URL. Uh oh, where'd it go? Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna do this way. Uh, this self. URL equals that. File path. Equals self video storage path. All right, so we're just gonna do this and run it this way. Test video integration. So get and clip, run. This should just grab the video. Yep, there it goes, get in the video. Got it. So now we should see the video right in here. There we go. Storage eight, eight, boom, there we go. Make sure we actually got it. Hello. Uh, where did I put it? What the hell? Video data before, ah, I made a new directory. Look at that, which is what this does. That's its whole purpose. Video data. Now we should see it in test data. And I misspelled it. Uh, S-T-O-R-A-G-E. There's that, there's that, there's that. Here's our video. This week in NASA. All right. All right, I got to run. Um, have a good one. We'll see you around. Uh, I'll be back on later tonight, probably at some point, uh, and keep messing with this. But for now, uh, take care. Be kind. We'll see you around. Later.